All right, sorry about that. Um, we didn't we didn't continue when the fee went off. We we waited, so y'all didn't miss anything. But right now we're going over to Matthews. We're dealing with the brother's question. Um, why do we call Christ a prophet and not the Son of God? Well, we're going through a few scriptures to show that we believe that Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach, or what the world knows as Jesus Christ, we consider him through the scriptures, yes, he is the Son of the Most High. Okay? He also is a prophet. He was a teacher. He was a rabbi. They call him rabbi, teacher, um, because he taught. He prophesied. He went from different places and he taught. So, where were we going? We were going to Matthew. Yeah. So we see that John understood that God was uh, that Christ was the Son of the Most High God. Matthew four. So let's go to Matthew four real quick. Go to Matthew four and verse three. Because even Satan knew that Yahweh Shai is sad. It's sad. The Christians don't know it, <laughs> but even Satan himself knew it. Read. Matthew chapter 4 verse 3 verse 1 verse 1 then was Jesus led up of the spirit in the wilderness to be tempted of the devil come on and when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights he was afterward in hunger and when the tempter came to him uh -huh. he said if thou be the son of God if thou be who the son of God we know that he was tempting him but he could have called him anything else God. he could have called if thou be a prophet right if thou be the savior but he said, if thou be the son of God, come on. Command that these stones be made bread. Uh -huh. But he answered and said, it is written, man said I live by bread alone. Right. So, I mean, it, and it's all through the scriptures that uh, it was known, it was public knowledge that Yahweh Shai was the son of the Most High, that, be, that only begotten son. Okay. Um, let's see here. Let's see if we can find another one. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 19. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 19. Con. Read that. All right, 2 Corinthians 1, 19. For the Son of the Most High, Yahweh Shai, right. Mashiach, who read, was, it, read, read, read it in regular English. For the Son of God. For the who? For the Son of God. Come on. Jesus Christ. Right. So even Paul knew that the Son of God was Jesus Christ. Go ahead. Who was preached among you by us. Uh-huh. Even by me and Silvanus. Uh-huh. And Timotheus. Right. Was not yet and nay, but in him was yet. Right. So you see the point. Even Paul knew that Christ was the Son of God. What we got? Yep. Go to Hebrews. Go to Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 1. Oh, we gotta, we gotta read verse. Con. Well, <laughs> read that. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1. <laughs> Hebrews 1 and 1. Uh huh. God, who at sundry times right. and in diverse manners. Right, so God in the old times and in diverse manners. Go ahead. Spake in time past. Right. And to the fathers by the prophets. Right? So meaning, how did he speak to Moses? Those diverse manners? He came to Moses in the burning bush. Right? He came in diverse manners. He didn't appear himself. The way he spoke to the fathers and the prophets, it was in these diverse manners. Go ahead. Hath in these last days spoken unto us uh -huh. by his son. By his what? By his son. Come on. Whom he had appointed here. Of all things. Right, so he speaks to us by his son or through his son, who he appointed the heir of all things. So, you know, just answering the question, yeah, we don't subscribe to that. We don't subscribe to the God is God is God and Christ are the same. We know that Christ is the only begotten Son of God. But again, Christ did teach. He did go preach. He did go to different cities and teach people. Where at? Go to Psalms 2 and verse 7. And then we're going to go to the next question. I'm trying to get these questions out so we can 
so we can hit this class. Go to go to go to Psalms, two verse seven. Psalms chapter two verse seven. I will declare the decree that the Lord has said said unto me. Right. Thou art my son. Thou art my what? Thou art my son. Come on. This day have I begotten thee. Right. So it's it's written here in Psalms that Yahweh Shai is his son. This is the day that he begotten him. Go to Ecclesiasticus. Uh, so, excuse me, Second Ezra, seven and verse twenty-eight. I mean, it's written all through the scriptures. Yeah, it's a it's a lot of different instances. So hopefully, there's no brothers on here on, online teaching that uh, Christ ain't the only begotten Son of the Most High. I hope I hope not. <laughs> but that's that they get that from the Muslims, man. That's the Muslim teaching. Read that, Second Ezra seven. And what? Verse 28. Go ahead. For my son, Jesus. For my who? My son, Jesus. Come on. Shall be revealed with those that be with him. Right. Uh, hold on. Second answer. Right. Go ahead. And they that remain shall rejoice within 400 years. Right. So, yeah, there was many Jesuses in the Bible. So if you're thinking, well, that's not talking about Jesus. Let's read on. After these years shall my son Christ die. So what? My son Christ died. Yeah, this was talking about Jesus Christ or Hamashiach Yahushai. So he said, my son Jesus. Then he said, after many years shall my son die. Now what prominent man in the scriptures with the name Jesus Christ died? Go ahead. And all men that have life, and the world shall be turned into the old silence seven days. Right, that's it on that. So, I mean, it's there. It's written all through it. Uh, so hopefully that gave you a little bit of insight. If you need more scriptures, definitely uh, just hit us up on the chat. So we got, I'm going to try to hit this last one and then go into the class. It says, if I was married before this truth and my spouse won't follow the law after years of trying to teach her. Do I give up or do I keep trying with this marriage? Well, let's go to second. Let's go to Corinthians real quick. Uh, I'm leaving wife. We we I won't hit this. Did you go over this on the Sabbath? No. It was was it this was it this exact question or no? But it was something along the lines. Yeah, we hit this on the Sabbath, but I mean we can hit it again. Go to uh, Corinthians. Yeah, let's go to 7 and verse 12. Let's start at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 12. But to the rest be I, not the Lord, if any brother hath their wife that believe it not. Right, so he said, to the rest speak I, not the Lord. So Paul was saying that this ain't commandment. When he said to the rest speak I, not the Lord, I'm not giving you thou shalt not out of the law. He was giving his up, he was giving his advice, man. He was giving his wisdom. You know how you go to brothers for counsel God. and give you scripture and wisdom on top of that? God. He was giving scripture all through the chapter, but this part he was saying, look, this is my advice concerning this instance. Go ahead. If any brother had their wife that believe it not. And she be pleased to dwell with him. If what? And she be pleased to dwell with him. Right. It says, for if any brother have a wife that believe not, and she be pleased to dwell with him. Now, this is the question. Is she pleased to dwell with you? Meaning, you're trying to show her the law, statutes, commandments, and she might not be gravitating to it right now, but is she trying to pull you away from the Bible? Are you like, we're going to do Passover, and she's like, hell no, we're doing Christmas. We're going to do Tabernacles. No, nope, I'm doing Easter. Well, like, like, where is her mind at? Is she combative? Is she trying to pull you away from the faith? Because that please to dwell with you don't mean that you say Passover, and she's trying to prop up a Christmas tree. <laughs> that please to dwell with you means that she respects the word of the Most High. You might say, hey, babe, uh, I need you to put on a dress. And she might not really understand or want to do it, but she does it out of pleasing you, pleasing her husband. 
See, you don't need the Bible to understand that a woman was supposed to please her husband. You don't need a thousand scriptures. I mean, they do it in the world, right? They ain't got no Bible in the world, but they do it in the world. Uh, if little uh, uh, if little Timmy was a drug dealer, guess what? He got the drug dealer wife. She was there cutting, cutting and cooking coke with him. Uh, she was chopping and bagging, right? Uh, if he was a basketball player, she had his jersey on. Uh, she might not even understand the sport. If she was a bat, if, if, if he was a football player and she liked basketball, guess what? She's now a cowboy fan. You see it all the time. I, there's a lot of women that didn't care about sports or anything that they're into now solely because of their husband. So we did it in the world. Women do it in the world. You can still do it for the truth. Hey, put the dress on. Well, I don't understand why. Or I don't want to. Well, you know what? He told me to do it. This is what he's about, so I'm going to be about it too. This is what it means to be pleased to dwell. Not no argument and combativeness and I'm a I'm propping up Christmas trees and and uh mistletoe decorations and you trying to you trying to celebrate the you know Hanukkah and she's trying to do something different. She's trying to teach the kids and we'll get into that part. But go ahead, read on. Oh, he said he said it. He said, "Yep, a divided household." Well, we'll just let the scriptures talk. Read. Let him not put her away. And so he says if he's pleased to dwell with her, let him not put her away. Go ahead. And the woman which hath an husband that believe not. All right. And if he be pleased to, to dwell with her. All right. So this is the flip, the, the reverse. This is the reverse of the situation. You might have a husband that don't believe, but the wife believes. It happens. Go ahead. Let her not leave him. Read. For the unbelieving husband. Is sanctified by the wife. Right. See, the unbelieving husband is sanctified. Now, that unbelief can be changed into belief, but it can't be fighting and contention in the house. That unbelief, because then now it's like, yeah, I really don't want to be down with that. Because you're fighting me and bullying me. See, that's what you don't want to get into. Where she's not trying to adopt the laws and statutes and the way of living that we have, but now it gets into this, I'm forcing you. You can't force anybody to do this. You can't force anybody to believe. That gotta be of their own free will. They gotta give up their own mind, their own self. That gotta be their free will offering. G give me that one uh, in Ecclesiastes. Force not the course. It's uh, 426. Go to, Ecclesi hold where you at. Somebody else get Ecclesiastes 4 and verse 24. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 and verse Yeah, I already hit, I already hit that point. <laughs> I hit that point. Yeah, if they don't believe, but they assist you in trying to, you know, push your faith, then yeah, be with them. Because now your belief might sanctify them. Your belief might show them something where they're like, damn, the Most High is real. The Most High does work. Let me, let me follow. But if they're going, and that's only if they're if they're encouraging you or even that please to dwell, that's when they're not fighting and going back and forth. But if you're fighting and going back and forth, they're not pleased to dwell with you. And you're not going to be pleased to dwell with them. So it's going to be hard for you to sanctify them because they ain't looking for that. They're looking, at, they're looking for a way out. They're looking at why are you forcing me. They're looking at why are you making me do this. Why every time I don't want to put the head wrap on it turns into an argument. Or I don't want to put the dress on or... I want to eat the pork, the shrimp, the crab, the lobster. You might have to come a different way to show them, okay, pork ain't good. Shrimp, crab, lobster, it ain't good for your health. They might have to see your example of good eating. And that's what it really is, man. Sometimes they're looking for your example. Your example ain't good enough. Now I'm saying that the brother online that asked a question, that because I don't know. But a lot of times they're sitting back looking at, well, why, well, why should I believe what you believe? Because they need that sign. It says the Jews seek a sign. The Greeks seek after knowledge. Read on in Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 26. Be not ashamed to confess thy sins. And force not the course of the river. And that's the point I wanted. Force not the course of the river. You can't force a person. You can't force them into the faith. You can't. And, 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 and most importantly. You can't make them grow or make them see it. All you are, all we are, are vessels for the most high's the most high's work to bring forth the word. But it's up to that person to see it. Give me that one. Uh 
about Apollos and Paul. Did you get it? Yeah. It's 1 Corinthians 3, verse 6. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 6. I know I'm moving through it pretty fast. But we, you know, we hit this on Saturday. I definitely want to get to this class. Go there. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Yeah, 1 Corinthians 3 and 6. Is that the one I want? 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6. Come on. I have planted. Go up. Go to, uh, let me see here. Right, uh, yeah, read verse six. Go ahead. I have planted a pot of water, right? But God gave the increase. But what? God gave the increase. Right. So one man plant, one man water, but the most high gave the increase. I know you said you've been in the relationship for three years. Now, we always got to look at ourselves and say, well, how long did it take me to get it? See, it's easy for us to, to, to just keep moving and say, well, I got it. Nigga, what's up with you? But remember, how long did it take for you to get it? Yep. Some of us ain't get it till our, our late 30s, late 40s. But now you got to give that person that you're trying to reach a chance to get it. So I'm not sure what method you're implementing or how you're trying to push her, but you can't. Yeah, you, there has to be order in the household. There has to be structure in the household. Again, you don't need the Bible for that, but some, some do. Some don't understand order and structure without the scriptures. But there has to be those things. There has to be respect. In the household. Now, your example. Your example is very important. Somebody give me Romans 12 and 1. Your, the, the example that you're bringing forth, because again, a lot of times they're not looking for anything but your example. You know, you got a lot of brothers, man, that they're trying to get their wife in order. They try to avenge all disobedience, but their disobedience has not been fulfilled. Right? That's in, uh, what is that, Corinthians? Uh, yeah. Somebody else get that one. But read, 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 uh, read where you at in Romans 12 and verse 1. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Uh huh. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, come on, by the mercies of the Most High, uh huh, that ye present. No, it's like Hebrews. Hebrews. Hebrews, uh, Hebrews 12 and 1. That's what it is. Come on. Hebrews 12 and verse 1. Hebrews 12, chapter 1, uh, verse 1. Uh huh. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Right. See, your wife is your cloud of witness. She's that witness that's looking at everything you say, everything you do. You're saying, look, we're going to keep the laws. And I'm not saying that this is the brother online. But you do have instances where some people are a little hypocritical. It's as I say, not as I do. You, you, you know, you, 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 you can't smash the Bible into people's minds, but you're not living up to the standard. So we want to make sure that we're living up to the standard. So it says, we're foreseeing, we are also compassed about with great cloud of witness. Go ahead. Let us lay aside every weight. Uh-huh. And the sin which doth so easily beset us. Right, the Bible is saying that. You got to make sure you put away your sin. You got to put away the things that easily beset you. Because now, give me one that says uh, evil lesson. Because now your wife is looking at you. And she's like, well, you ain't doing that. You ain't following that to the, to the fullest of your, of your potential. Wait, you want me to watch class, but you only watch class once a week. The rest of the time, you on the video games. I'm just saying. I'm not saying that that's the person that asked the question. I'm just giving an example. Disclaimer, disclaimer. Right? Because it happens. You got a lot of brothers that do that. They want to get their wife in order. They want to get their family in order, but they're not living up to the standard. Read on. And let us run with patience. With what? Patience. See, it takes patience. You got to be patient. And, and again, the divided household, that can be remedied. Just pull back a little bit. Pull back a little bit off the pedal and don't be so forceful. Don't try to force the course. But 
I'm not saying that you just let any old thing happen in your house either. There gotta be a standard, there gotta be boundaries. There gotta be respect. There has to be respect for one another. You, uh, uh, I'm gonna say it, I'm gonna say it again. You don't need the Bible. We shouldn't need the Bible to show a husband and a wife respect or for a husband and a wife to show one another respect. I shouldn't have to go to a thousand scriptures to show you to respect me. But sometimes that's the case, but you gotta see in, in this instance, she's not following the scriptures. But so now you gotta show her that she should, should respect you in another, you know, you gotta use other means. Cause she's not gonna, she's not taken to the Bible. She has to see his virtue. Say it again? I wanna say she has to see his virtue. Well, yeah, she's, she's gonna see that example. So you gotta make sure your example's on 10. It says run with patience, go ahead. The race that is set before us. Right, now go to, uh, what's the other one I wanted? Ecclesiastes 9 and 1. What is it? Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 1. Uh -huh. Be not oh, jealous. Hold on. Let them, let them get it. Yeah, don't talk so loud. Come on. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 1. Right, go ahead. Be not jealous over the wife of thy bosom. Come on. And teach her not an evil lesson against thyself. Yeah, those evil lessons are taught when you're the head of the household, the example, and you're saying, well, the Bible says this, this, and this, and then you're not living up to it. Remember, go to, go to Corinthians. Go to the one in Corinthians. Corinthians, uh... It's 10 in uh, 2 Corinthians. 10, 10. yeah. And 2 Corinthians go, chapter 10. 10 and verse 6. 6. 2 Corinthians 10 and verse 6. Go on. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 6 uh -huh. and have it in a readiness to avenge all disobedience right? when your obedience is fulfilled. And this is the part that we miss a lot where we're so ready to avenge disobedience and we're disobedient ourselves. We're disobedient in the small things. We have the sin that easily besets us and makes us look a certain way to the ones around us. So you got to make sure that your ducks are in a row Make sure that you're that example in your household of strength, of, of, of unity, of communication, of uh, you want to be that example of um, a soft answer, turn away much wrath. You don't want the household to be divided. So you got to, again, draw back a little bit as far as the Bible, the Bible, the Bible, the Bible, and figure things out. How, well, how come you don't want to follow the scriptures? What about the Bible is it? What is it? What is it about? She might need more basics and more milk and less meat. Did you show her who she was according to the scriptures? Did you bring her to the history? Did you show her why it was important? Do you take her to Deuteronomy the twenty eighth chapter? That's how I would do it. Anybody you meet, no matter man, woman, child, you bring them to Deuteronomy the twenty eighth chapter to show them why is this even important? Because if they don't know why the Bible is important for them according to their nationality, then it don't matter. Anything else does not matter. It doesn't matter about a head wrap, a dress, a skirt, don't eat pork. They won't understand why it's important. You, that We have to show them the value in the scriptures. We got to show them why it's important for us as Israelites. Uh, that got to be the first and foremost. So I would I would just revamp the method and the, and the approach. Remember, you can't force it. You can't expect just because you've been three years that she's supposed to be on your level. It says one man plant, one man water, the most high gives the increase. So it's about, sometimes you gotta ask yourself, well why is the most high not increasing the things that I'm watering? Am I giving enough water? Too much water? Am I giving it some room to breathe? We're the husbandmen. We gotta, we gotta be the ones to evaluate and see what is it that I'm not doing as a husbandman. Can't just, we don't want to just blame the recipients all the time. It's not always their fault. Again, I'm going to say it one more time. The scriptures say that he pleased to dwell with you. If there's division and fighting and she's trying to do something else, Christmas, and you're like, no, and she's going behind your back and propping up the tree, and then you might want to reevaluate that situation. All right? Let's talk. Uh... Yeah, I answered that one. Yeah, so let's get into this class, man. Uh, we got a good class. I know we cut off. 
I know we cut off, so a lot of the questions got erased. But uh, we'll be back Wednesday. But let's get into this class that we got prepared. Uh, I'll let the brother take it away. Uh, yeah, so this class is on is titled The Origins of uh, The Origins of Sodomites, right? So the first scripture we're gonna get is Psalms chapter 83 and verse 3. And uh the reason why this class is made is to bring some balance, a little bit of balance to how, you know, a little bit of balance and understanding as to why somebody might be the type of person that they are and why, you know, you know, just a different outlook on how to look at them because it could have been you. And, you know, I was reading the scripture earlier right here, right? Because a lot of us, we, we look at people, right? It's like... We'll look at like the prostitutes, for the ladies, they'll look at the prostitutes driving up, walking up and down Bissonnette, or or down Fondren now. I saw like two on, two on Fondren today. But I, I, you would hear women say, that would never be me. That couldn't have been me. Which is true yet to an extent, but you don't know what that person went through that made them end up on the corner selling their body. You don't know what that person went through that made their mind so now Reprobate, I should say, to where now they're like, man, I'm gonna sell my body for money. So you don't know what their upbringing was. You don't know anything about that person. So the balance that I'm trying to bring in the class is, you know, the most high sent us here. Like we're gonna hit the scriptures, but we, we, we the, the, the whole need not of a physician. Everybody here is sick. Everybody here is dealing with something. So. Like the scripture in Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 12 says, it says, For man also knoweth not his time. Verse 11, I'm sorry. I return and so under the sun, that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill. But time and chance happeneth to them all. So you got lucky. You got lucky. Chance hit you right to where you weren't in a situation to where Maybe as a child, you got touched by your uncle, or you got touched by your big brother, or your cousin, or whatever, a babysitter, while you were in daycare. You got lucky as a child that maybe that didn't happen to you, and now you're traumatized as a child, and your innocency is taken away as a child. And now, now what? Because when you find when you find a lot of homose uh, a lot of people that's homosexuals or bisexuals. Something happened to them. So like the scriptures were gonna hit, the Most High made us perfect, but you know, something happened that brought the spirit on us. And, and I am gonna say this for the for the balance. Yeah. Yes, we blaze that spirit. God, we, do not con we do not condone that spirit, we destroy that spirit. So this, this class is in no way, shape or form any type of justification. This justification Oh, you're justified in, in, in the homosexual, the sodomy acts. Hell nah. We destroy that spirit. We flame that spirit. We flame the flamers. God. Right? Of course. We so we don't play that. The scriptures say, cry aloud, spare not. Show my people their transgressions. So we definitely, and it's not just that. It's not just the sodomite spirit. It's yep. the drug dealers. It's it's the murder. It's everything. God. It's everything. So I want to just disclaimer, disclaimer. Yeah. That this is in no way, shape, or form a class to to uh, condone. condone or justify any type of wickedness. Con. All right, so let's get it. All right, so let's hit uh, Psalm chapter 83, verse 3. Psalm chapter 83, verse 3. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. So first thing we got to realize is that when you go way back in the day, yes, our people wasn't into it like that, but now... In 2019, you can see there's a big explosion of it. Everybody's agreeing with it. Everybody's accepting to it. Every, not nowadays, you, you, you have people that would say, yeah, you're definitely not born gay. But nowadays, those people that used to say that, they're like, oh, yeah, you're born gay. You can be born gay. Like, their mentality is now switched. And when you look, read that, read that from the top. They have taken crafty counsel against our people. We gotta realize, man, it's a crafty counsel against our people in every shape, form, facet, everything. Look at the, look at how they do movies. You see so many, so much murdering, 
and so much craziness on movies that you get our people get desensitized to when we actually see somebody get shot or killed. You're desensitized to it. So in, when you watch these movies nowadays and these TV shows, everything has uh, some form of homosexuality in it. And some gay innuendos. Something. And, and they usually make it as a joke. So you sit there, you watch it, and and you laugh at it. You don't condone it now. You just laugh at it. Like like whenever Trump was uh was back in the 80s, whenever him and uh, 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 Giuliani kissed each other. Giuliani was in drag, and oh, he wow. kissed them all on the cheek and touched them all on his breast. But they laughed about it. It was on TV, man. Trump, our president. God. Check it out. Rubbing all up on Mayor Giuliani. Disgusting. That's crazy. Yeah, no, I like what you're saying about the desensitizing of our people because that's what they do. It's with everything. They, they, put, they over-sexualize everything. But yeah, every show you watch, Supergirl, Right, you can't watch nothing on Netflix with your kids because the first opening scene is two lesbians. Right. Or the first opening scene is, you know, Superman is gay or, or Supergirl is gay. Even in the cartoons, it's like they got like some, I was, uh, what is it? Um, I forgot what it was, but I don't know if you're gonna go into it, but a lot of these, all these movies and TV shows, man, they gotta have a gay, it's almost like, where you have to have a, a black character. It's like equality yeah. now. Yeah, now equality you have to have a, right. Now you have to have a gay character. Yeah. Or a bisexual character, and what it does, yeah, when you're young and you see that, when when you're my son's age and you see that, it goes from ill because he'd be like, Dad, ill. When we see it in the mall, two dudes walking up holding hands, he's like, ill. Yeah. And then five years from now, if he don't stay on top of his mind and show him that it's wrong, he'll laugh about it. Kind. Right? Then by the time he gets into college, he'll be experimenting. Kind. You know, and the next thing you know, he, and I'm not saying my son, but that's how they do it. It's a programming that they do slowly but surely. Then you wonder, like, I didn't raise my son for my daughter gay. How did it happen? Well, uh, TV, movies, he's going to go into it, food, so all the, the slight of hand, all the little suggestions yeah. that they put out there in the media, the music, your favorite rapper is walking around in a dress. Right, because that's where it went from. Okay. It went from Tim's and jeans to Katz's, like everything was extra tight, right? With your butt hanging out. With, with your butt right. hanging out, jeggings. Oh, to now you rocking, you know, you in a dress. Now you got guy. Not everything is. Uh, you can't determine what gender is. Oh yeah. It's ambiguous. Exactly. Yeah, meaning it don't, it goes for a girl like the clothing. It's ambiguous. Meaning unisex. It's, it, or unisex. Right, it can fit a girl or a boy. Those jeans are good for a girl or a boy. The shirt is for a girl or a boy, because yeah. of the way. It, but it's cut more effeminate for a girl. But they say, yeah, that's a that's a boy shirt. They have a little pink sprinkled in it, touches of purple and violet. But that's what they do to our children. So that crafty council, listen, that starts from birth. Kind of. And you know, it's crazy because it's crazy. You was talking about the movies and the shows. Now I remember watching this show called uh, Mr. Robot. It was about some hackers. Now, there was absolutely no reason, my real will tell you, there was no reason for them to have a freaking gay, excuse my language, a gay set scene in it. In a like, cartoon? No, 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 it, it was a show. Oh. It was a show about these guys like trying to hack and erase all the, the accounts of everybody in America. There's a reason. I think I've seen that. Bruh. There's, there's a reason they want to indoctrinate. There was no reason for, for them to show two men like, like literally having sex. There was no reason for it. So, but they, like you said, they put it in every movie and every TV show. And just think about it. If you played sports as a man here in America, when you played football or you played basketball, mm -mm -mm. what happened? Everybody gave you that little pat on the rear. Uh, yeah. Oh, good yeah. job, man. The old white coach uh, rubbing but, them cheeks. Yeah. But listen, man, I remember when I played, it was. It wasn't even like a pat on the butt now for good job. It was like a grab, a grope. A grope. It was. It was all that. And it, <laughs> two finger Newton. <laughs> uh. it, was, <laughs> it was all that, but it was like taken as a joke now. So it, it's crazy, man. It's crazy. And if we're not careful, if we're not careful, man, it's definitely going to happen to the kids. But another point I wanted to make too about the crafty council is that they're comparing homosexuality to civil rights. Like, like our 400 years being here in America as slaves and everything that we went through, segregation, like, 
that compares to how homosexuals are being treated. So the crappy council, man, it runs deep to, to, to us to us eating soy products, and the soy products is making men effeminate, and it's making women overly effeminate to where a woman now, a little girl, she's starting puberty at the age of four, five, six years old now, which is which is ridiculous. And you know, her they're they're having periods younger and younger and younger. So they're not only putting stuff in the food, but it's on TV. It's it's everywhere. It's everywhere, and it's that crafty council man that they took against our people. So, yeah, man, go go to Job chapter nine verse twenty four. Read on. Why? And then somebody else get Job. Read on. Read it from the top. They have taken crafty counsel against the people. Right. So verse two says, "For lo, thy enemies, right, the enemies of our people did this." God. God. Yes, they took crafty counsel. Read. And consulted against thy hidden one. Come on. They have said, "Go and let us cut them off." From being a nation. This is why they gave you the homosexuality in the first place. Gun. It was all about the homosexuality, abortion clinics, AIDS, right, Tuskegee uh, projects. All these things were geared towards cutting us off as a nation. Gun. That's what we got to realize. Think about it. How can two men reproduce? They can't. How can two women reproduce? They can't. And then what do they go out and do? Two men go out and adopt and act like it's they act like it's they kid. Two chicks, she'll go get a sperm donor. She'll get banged by the homeboy, right? And then they'll try to raise the baby, and that that causes a whole mess of confusion, yeah. right? But it said they did it to do what? To cut us off from being a nation. Go ahead. That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. Right, but see, the Most High got a whole other plan in store because if you can cut us off, then the world's gonna end. <laughs> But they can't cut us off because there is going to be a remnant that won't bow down to that foolishness. Gun. That won't bow down to that confusion. So you gotta, you gotta really sit back and see, man. Like, man, the enemies. They, when it says crafty counsel, they didn't just say like we just going we're gonna be homos ourselves. They did it for a reason because they know that the black man loves to follow up the white man's rectum, likes to run and follow everything he does. If if my white daddy is doing it, I'm gonna go do it. So what did they do first? They were the faggots. They were the homos. White is right. They was they was in the in the East Village in New York and Soho and Chelsea, yep. running around holding hands. That's, listen, I grew up in New York. That's all you saw that in the eighties, nineties. They wasn't in the hood. There was none of that in the hood. And and if you was, you was down low as it could be. But if you went through the city and you was riding certain trains, and you might see it, you might see two little dudes acting fruity, and you were like, what the hell's going on? I was young. I'm like. What is this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. It wasn't in. It wasn't the way it is now, where you go to the hood and you got homo thugs, right. because the white man was like, "We gonna do this and make it cool. Yep. We gonna show you that if you don't fall to what we want, if you don't give up that shoot, you ain't getting this job. You ain't gonna. You ain't gonna get in this promotion. You ain't gonna be able to run around with all the Versace and Louis. Yep. It's like it's a perk." Of a homosexual to have money, like they all got money, it seemed like. Like y'all all got money. Oh yeah. Right. Well, yeah, they ain't got the responsibilities that we have. What's that? You know, it's crazy. I just saw this uh, this little excerpt from uh, Killer Mike got this new show. I heard about it. And then uh, I just saw a little clip, mm -hmm. and they were teaching um, vocational training school, mm -hmm. and um, they it was just weird. I don't even I didn't even really want to uh, try to read and understand why he was showing this, but uh, he was trying to make some sort of point, but. They was teaching an uh, electrician class, and before they even got to showing how to run a wire and, and put the socket in, they showing two dudes getting down in this. Um, what? Yeah, it, it was just it was weird, man. It's like that's very weird. What does that have to do with anything? It, 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 well, just just to expound on your point, like you mentioned, like even with these jobs and things like that, mm -hmm. that's like the right. The, the, the gatekeeper is like you got to do something. You gotta give up that shoot. Yeah, you gotta get explored before 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 you can get down with death row. You gotta give that up. But that but that's where society is at now. Where heterosexual, we're looked at as the the we're looked at as we're wrong yeah. for being heterosexual. Like, oh, you ain't gay? Hell, no, I ain't gay. It's like, nigga, what's wrong with you, <laughs> Bruh, Pretty soon, thirty years from now, they gonna look at us like, yeah, we're the anomaly. Like we're the rarity. 
gonna be like live. It's gonna be like live. It's gonna be like it's gonna, it said it's gonna be as the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. It's gonna be worse. Listen, to this. I was gonna say they are, they already look at us like that because we don't eat booty. Right. <laughs> yeah, like listen, I was in the mall and this dude was like. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You smell so nice. Wait till I go home. He was talking to his lady. He was like, wait till I go home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let me say that. Let me put that out there. But yeah, he was like, I was selling him some oil, and he was like, yeah, man, you smell so, so nice. Wait till I go home, man. I'm, like, I'm on groceries. The groceries. And I was like, what the hell? And she was like, she was like, you can't, just, you can't just say that out in public like that. He was like, listen. Like this was back in 2017. Was saying this oh, wow. in 2019. It was 2017. He was like. Like, listen, it's 2017. If you ain't eating booty by now, something wrong with you. I'm like, <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, that's the money. That, that's the mentality. It's like, you know, you'll see, you'll see the the homosexual couples, man. They're so brazen and brave with it. Yeah. Like they'll be they walking each other. They, they'll, they'll be holding hands and walking. There, there was one when we worked in the mall, and they worked in the shoe spot. But one of them did. But he, the other one would walk him to work, and you know how you kiss your wife goodbye. They would do all that, and I'm like, bruh, really? Disgusting. But that's the mind, because it, it don't matter who's looking or who's watching. We want you to see. We want you to watch. We want you to be curious. Mm -hmm. That's why you got your bi-curious people, because they ain't there yet, but they halfway there. But that's the point. That's that crafty counsel. It's to, it's to try to destroy the nation, for one, because if you look at our people, come on, man, when you look at that gay parade, there's more of our people here than Esau. And I'm talking about our people, the whole 12 tribes. And Ephraim, right now, man, they're, the, the, the damn nine and a half, they are really in there with this damn homosexual spirit. You go to the Puerto Rican uh, day parade in New York, they running around just soft, God. with no masculinity, just rainbowed out. Eyebrows sharp. Everything. And I'm like, wow, this is crazy. So the point is to destroy our people, God. but also to keep us separate and segregated away from the love of the Most High. Okay. Uh, where are we gonna go? Go to uh, Job chapter nine, verse twenty-four. Scripture we always hit. <laughs> Job <Wow. laughs> chapter nine, <laughs> verse twenty-four. <laughs> the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. So yeah, we understand that the earth is given into the hand of the wicked, and that's why so much of this is going on. That's why the people's minds are so messed up to where you you would have. People sending their kids to the Catholic Church, and the Catholic priest is touching the kids. Oh, oh, man. So what's happening to those kids? I was gonna say. No, I just seen a new thing about the the Baptists. They have over three hundred pastors that have been uh, charged or or at least accused of sexual assault, huh. dealing with kids, whatever it may be, touching on individuals. That's the that's the church though. Three hundred yeah. cases, and there's definitely more. Huh. So think about it, man. What's going to happen to those kids? Like the scripture says, train up a child in the way he shall go. And when he's old, he will not depart. So the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. When you look at these television shows that these kids is growing up watching, think about it. Think about how Barney was. Would you yeah. let your son watch Barney? Not, not, not now, no. No, it's not Nope. Think about how Barney acted. Think about how Teletubbies acted. The Wiggles. Think about... Uh, uh, SpongeBob, SpongeBob. And, and, and yeah, because he was in love with Squidward. L listen, SpongeBob, SpongeBob and Patrick are both gay, and then you got Sandy, who's a lady, but she's harder than anybody else in the show. Yeah, she's the one that does the sports. She's the yeah. lesbian. Yep, yeah. you gotta so see it. Think about what that. Think about what that's doing to your kids coming up. So now you got like the Teen Titans. That's like the popularest one. They got the Teen Titans on there twerking. Yeah. If you can pull that up on the screen to show, because a lot of us now we're we're, we're we're old, we're adults, we're not we're not watching cartoons to see that these cartoons is having a whole bunch of homosexual stuff in it. Like I don't I, I remember watching cartoons when I was younger and they're emphasizing the butt, but they never had them twerking on there. They never had the little boys twerking. You can see videos on YouTube where like parents catches their boys twerking and they put it up on YouTube like it's funny. Or, or, or my son, he, he, he went in my closet and tried on my heels. Yeah, and right. now you got him on damn YouTube prancing around with your pocketbook and heels on. Like like the Kardashians did. Courtney Kardashian did that. Yeah, and, and then you got the nerve to wonder why 10 years from now he's walking around switch hitting. Mm -hmm. I, there, was a, there was a chick in the mall, man. She was uh, showing me a picture of her 
of her nephew. She was like, well, I can't wait to, her, her, her sister's going out of town for job poor for like six months so she gets to babysit. So I'm like, cool. So she saw me the picture and I was confused because he had a tiara on. Oh, damn. And I was like, it's a boy, right? And uh, she said, yeah. I said, but why is he, why you got the tiara on him? And she's like, oh, I let him do what he wants. I'm like, but he's a baby. I said, I said, you gotta, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta guide him and direct him in the way that he's supposed to go. He's a boy. Gone. And she tried to really go back and forth, and I was like, you got it. I ain't gonna argue with you. That's that's that. If that's what you want for your kid, that's what you want. Gone. But if I see my son even playing with a doll, it's like, bro, no, put that back. That's your sister's. Put that down. Don't put none of your mom's stuff on. Don't don't. It, it ain't cute. Gone. It, it is is the thing. It's not funny. It's not cute. It's not funny. Gone. You know, you start feeding into that spirit, like, oh, he's so cute. Look at him, and you start filming it, and you, you, you text message it to the whole family. Okay. Come on, you keep you promote that spirit, that spirit of confusion. Yeah. Right. And that's why uh, that First Corinthians four and thirty three go right with it. First Corinthians chapter fourteen and verse thirty three, because you know the, the the Most High. Listen, it's it's crazy because think about it. Everybody has like their own opinion of what what should be done or how they should raise their children or he's gonna wear heels. He can wear the dress. Like I said, it's confusion, man. When you look at the definition of sodomy or sodomite, it's something against nature, something that's not natural. Kind. This is something, listen, nature. Listen, I'm going to eat, I'm going to use the bathroom. Smooth like that. When you start dealing with all these extra, you know, he can put on his lipstick if he wants to. That's the world. And that's why the, the world was given to the hand of the wicked to cause this. Read where you at. God, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33. Uh huh. For God is not the author of confusion. Yeah, and it's confusion. The world is in confusion in what's thinking, what's right, and what's wrong. What they put down? She said, she said, men don't even kiss their wives in public the way they do. You're right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're like, man, get away. Yeah. Right? Yeah, but they're like, they're like, we're going to let everybody see this. Yeah, wicked they are. Public display of affection. They on that. PDA. Oh, they got to grip the hands super tight. They both got to have tight little jeans on. Right. And prancing around like I see it, man. I'm just like, man, y'all are disgusting. Yeah, man. Most High is not looking favorably on this. Right. Like, y'all think Christ died for you to hold hands? Like, come on. They, they believe that, though. Yeah. But that's that, e even that confusion in their mind, where it says the Most High is not the author of confusion. He didn't, he didn't put that in your mind to be like that. Exactly. He didn't say, yeah, you were born gay. Yeah. But then you'll have people that say, oh, yeah, there's a gay gene. Nigga, where? Or animals are gay. Oh, they, they lack the Y chromosome. They, yeah, like, Please. no. There ain't no gay animals. There ain't no no male lions sleeping with another male lion. They're trying to say that like there's two male lions sleeping with another. Please. Nah, bro. You ain't never seen that on the Nature Channel. That probably was an experimental procedure that probably was done. Been, yeah, they probably been drugging them lions. Yeah. Right. Ain't no gay. When, when the last time you seen a dog, hump, a male dog, right. run up on another male dog well, in that right. way? They, they do do that to show male dominance. I get that, but is he really trying to impregnate this other dog? No, because they know he, he knows he can. Because what does the dog go off of? A dog being in heat, so he knows he can't do nothing with that. If it's a domination thing, that's a little suspect. I've seen dogs, uh, uh, I forget the word they use, to other dogs. He'll flip him on his back, bark him down, put him in check like that. But I didn't see no dog hump another dog to show his intimidation. Right. To show his masculinity. One month I do that to my dog. I had to, <laughs> I had to get him off, man. Yeah, because yeah. that it ain't right. Yeah. But but even dogs know, like, bro, I can't get nothing out of this. <laughs> ain't no pheromone smell going on here. Ain't I don't smell no in heatness. Yeah. But 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 why is it that if a dog, something so base of an animal, can understand that that's not the way to do it? How come we can't? Yeah. Well, because we love to dwell in that confusion. Gun. Our people that are lost, they like that confusion. They like that, that they like to believe, like, yeah, I'm, I was born like this. I'm different. Yeah. I'm special. Right. Right? Man, you ain't special. You're confused. Yep. Get it together. Yeah. Or, or you've been touched. Yeah. In, in a lot of cases, that's what, it's either touched or you've been hurt. A lot of dudes, <laughs> literally, a lot of dudes. I, I, listen, I've had the conversation the last couple of days, the last week, uh, a female saying that a lot of men is saying that, this woman took their masculinity, has demasculated them. I'm like, how? How? What are you watching? How did she demasculate you in sex? I don't understand that. How you feel weak and feel as if now you got to go to a man? 
Now you feel as if that, you know, this woman is not treating you the right way or the way around. Now the man has, what did he do to you? He cheated on you? Okay. He cheated on you. Now you went to a chick that looked like a man that did the same thing. What you talking about? Read the scripture and, again. And, and that's how you know it's a spirit of confusion. Because right. these damn homosexuals, the men will go to the most effeminate looking man. Oh, yeah. Just go get you a woman. Right. And then the damn butch dyke, bull dyke. She'll go, she'll go, she'll turn herself into a man. Right. Hey. The, the damn lipstick lesbian will go get her a woman that looks just like a man. What what sense does that make? What's that? She's the, the, the chick is big and swole. Oh yeah. Got long dreads, head shaved off on the side. Belly. It's sad because I just described a brother. Ooh. But that's how these chicks be trying to look. They try to look like men. He looks like a man. But chicks try to look like him. Oh yeah, trying to throw the beard, trying to throw trying the beard. Like, trying, yeah, <laughs> trying, to, trying to take the testosterone to get the little extra scruff. Right. Right? Trying to take down your breast. Trying to eat extra so you can grow a little bit of breast or take away the estrogen so the breasts go away. They, they tape them down yep. with the sports bra. Listen, my cousin just actually, I think, believe got her, her breast taken away, like reduction, oh. so that she can have more of a flat chest, man. Yeah. Trying to look like a dude. Man, stop that. I know he is. You still <laughs> gonna bleed. <laughs> right. You still gonna bleed uh, monthly until you get that surgery, but that's what they're doing. They're trying to take away that. You gotta see it. Where, where we at? And it's beautiful. Uh, we was at uh, First Corinthians uh, fourteen and verse thirty-three. Read that again. Come. Somebody else gave me Genesis two and eighteen. For God is not the author of confusion. Yeah. See, the Most High never created this confusion, man. That's how you understand that it's not right. And when, whenever you have family members around you, listen. There's something wrong with them. You gotta investigate what is going on because God never intended. For homosexual activity to begin. Read where you at. Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. Okay. And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. It's not good that what? Man should be alone. See, it was not good that man should be alone. So what did the most high do for Adam? Read. I will make him and help me for him. He'll do what? I will make him and help me for him. So he's gonna give him a help me. So let's see exactly what this help me was. Jump down to verse 22. Verse 22. Because the world seems to think that everything can go on. The most high or the most high created man with man and woman with woman, and we can do as we feel. It's our God, it's our God giving free uh, uh, act or law. We can do what we want to do. What did the most high intend for this uh help me for this man? Read. Verse 22. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man. Made he a woman. Made he a what? A woman. Come on. And brought her unto the man. See, the Most High intended a woman and a man to be together. Not Adam and Steve or Brenda and Darlene. That wasn't supposed that was not meant to be. It's sad. But they want to act like it's right. No, that's confusion. The Most High intended a man and a woman to be together. That was to help me. That was the uh, to be fruitful and populate the world. You can't have two women together. What you going to do? Huh? What you gonna do? How y'all gonna populate? You gonna go to the sperm bank? Huh? You gonna have you a private donor? Man slide through? Huh? Hit Darlene? Two men together? What you gonna do? Put your sperm in another woman? So now you can have kids together? That's crazy, man. It's confusion. It's con, con. You know, one thing, one thing uh, I wanted to bring out. Um, I'm glad I remembered this. Because this happened like two or three weeks ago, man. It was this thing with Rihanna. So Rihanna had brought out like a new lingerie thing, right? Okay. But really what she was doing was it was a pegging thing. So when I when that when I saw it, I was like, what the hell is, what is pegging? No pegging. Listen, don't 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 even look up what pegging is. Pegging pretty much is when Pe a man pegging. P-E-G-G-I-N-G. -G -G pegging, not pegging. Oh pegging. pegging. Peg. Yeah. Peg. Uh -huh. So it's pretty much when a man lets his woman put on a strap on. And the yeah. woman is the one that's yeah. the it's woman is the one that's going work. Yeah. So now you can see why now you can see why this whole emphasis on the butt and the whole eating the booty thing oh, yeah. is now so popular. Yeah, but 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 think about it. When you watch the movie uh, Deadpool, the first Deadpool, y'all remember that scene? Con. Where you let the chick throw the strap on? Con. Yeah, but that's supposed to be a kid's that's a kid's comic book. Mm, wow. yep. We know that Deadpool's more controversial and that movie was rated R, but think about how many parents brought their kids to see Deadpool. Yep. A lot. Of and they caught that scene of a man catching it from his woman. And they're like, Daddy, what's that? How do you explain that? 
Oh, she packed them, son. We got a lot of cats that's down low doing that, man. Oh yeah. They get off on that. You I see. I, I I seen man, and not to get too graphic, but I seen one. It was a it was an illustration, but it, uh, the the caption was like, "Yeah, you got to play with his prostate." Ooh. Now, if anybody knows where the male prostate is, Kundalini. That's in the anal. That's in the anal cavity. Tucked. So if you go get a prostate exam, they got to put their finger in your in your anus. Yeah, in your rectum. But that, but that's a but now they're saying that that women to get a man off, right? To make him like it more, or to heighten that erection, right? Or excuse me, that 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 orgasm. that orgasm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you play with the prostate. Yeah. So now, what is that doing for a man? That's loosening him up to go explore. Oh yeah. With another, uh, huh? With another man. Yeah, to go explore with another man. That's like that uh, that show uh, Green Leaf on Netflix. He was over here on Tinder with the dude. <laughs> he was on Tinder like this. <laughs> He's on yeah. Who knows what happened to him? Tinder. I know what happened to him. He got he got right. flamed up till he finally went he got ahead burnt. and, 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 and uh, jumped on something, man. Max, what were you gonna say? No, and and listen, I'm gonna say this. I'm sorry. I know this topic for some. I gotta give the disclaimer. We're trying to be as uh, sensitive to everybody online as possible. We're trying to make sure that we we use certain words, scientific phrases, and things like that. It's a it's a topic, and you know certain things have to be said. To bring the topic out, all right. So if you're easily offended, uh, you know, with certain words, uh, you might want to log off, all right. But we're trying to make sure that we're conscious of, you know, your your conscience, and not be offensive, all right. So I just want to give that disclaimer because this is a topic. I mean, when you start talking about homosexuality, you know, you gotta you gotta talk about these things that a lot of that America. The sad part is America. As much as they desensitize you, they've also sheltered you, yeah. because you go to a lot of other countries where they'll have they they show sex on TV all day, and, and it's like oh yeah that's nothing, uh, you know new weather casters and things like that. Yeah. And then here in America, when you even mention, it's funny they'll give it to you in like small little innuendos. They'll draw you know um, phalluses in the kids' cartoons and hide it, but then if you mention the word if you say the word penis, everybody's clams up. Oh, right. don't say that. Right, but but it's drawn all through Mickey Mouse's face and yeah. all the Disney shows, and yeah. you got gay cartoons. So again, we're trying to be sensitive, but we got to bring out our topic. All right, so I just want to say that. Go ahead. All right. No, I was saying just like about the the whole thing with the eating of the booty that came popular because like people like Charlamagne the God. And Kevin Gates talking about how he eat booty. Trick Daddy. Kevin, uh, who else was it? Uh, and then Tank. And then, Tank. And then Janae yeah. Akeo, or Keiko, or whatever. Oh, she made song. she made a song. Yeah. She made it cool because she made a melody to it. Yeah. I mean, come on. She made it sound like it was cool. Yeah. Kevin Hart. Was Kevin Hart. Oh, he talks about it? Yeah, in his, in his stand up. Um, he was oh, talking yeah. about, uh, matter of fact, I believe it was one of his first stand ups. And um, he was speaking about how his wife kind of threw him under the bus. And I remember uh, it. The joke was kind of like, you know, uh -huh. oh, you peed in the bed and then you turned around and you ate in the butt, whatever, whatever. Yeah, and I you remember. got people moving cups yeah. around on the table because now this is making me look like I ate booty all my life. That was only one time <laughs> on your birthday type of thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You said it just like it, too. That's the funny part. <laughs> but yeah, but that's what they do. They make it into a joke. God they, God. Make it, they make it light. They make it light to where now it's acceptable. <clears throat> Man, I remember when homosexuality was a thing. It was like, bro, you nasty, ill. Yeah. Now it's like, look at it, these, these cats is holding hands. I'm still like, ill. Yeah, I remember I was in uh, Chicago, Boys Town. You know, I was 2012. And, you know, obviously we didn't see too much, well, me at least, homosexuality. But I was in Chicago walking for the Cubs game. I was in Boys Town. I was like, bro, why is all these dudes holding hands out here? I was like, what is literally going on? But that was a gay part of town, though. You know, so it's an epidemic. Mm -hmm. I, I remember when I, was working in, when I was working at Walmart, it was a, a dude, but I didn't know whether or not it was a dude or a woman. Mm -hmm. But then it, it, was, it was crazy because it was like, when I, I ain't know how to, at this time, I ain't know how to talk to, to, to you know, people that like men that like men. So I just kind right. of just stayed my distance. And yeah. he spoke to me, I ain't know how to, or he or she, he spoke to me. <laughs> and I ain't know how to react. I just got stuck. Right. I, I didn't know how to react to it, so it was like it was crazy. You know what? On, on that point, man, hit Ecclesiastes. Uh, no, 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 not not Ecclesiastes. Hit, hit Romans nine and twenty. 
Just on that point, because you said you didn't know if it was a he or a she, right? Right. That's that confusion, though. It's that confusion, kind. And a lot of them, you know, a lot of the ones that's trannies, they'll ask themselves. Well, they won't ask right, themselves. Right. They'll be like, if, if, if God is real, why would he make me like this? I'm a man trapped in a woman's body. Or I'm a woman trapped in a man's body. So read this, Romans 9 and 20. Romans chapter 9 verse 20. Nay, but oh man, who art thou that replies against God? Who art thou that replies against God? Read. Shall the thing born say to him that formed it, why hast thou made me thus? And a lot of them, they really got the balls to go up to the most high and be like, man, well, like God made a mistake. Like he made, like he got the most high made the sun, the moon, the stars, the earth, the fishes. The earth is at the right temperature. If it was a couple degrees hotter, we'll all die. If it was a couple degrees colder, we'll all die. The most high made everything perfect. But somehow he messed you up. Somehow he messed you up where you're a woman trapped in a man's body, where you're a man trapped in a woman's body. So you're really gonna, you really have the balls to speak against the <coughs> most high and question the most high like he messed up with you. You really think the most high messed up with you? Or did you mess up somewhere? Or did something happen to you that caused you to go the wrong way? Go to uh, go to Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 29. Just to show the most high that didn't, the, the most high has never messed up. Neither will he will. Scripture says that the most high is not a man that he shall repent. The most high doesn't repent. Yeah, he don't gotta. He don't gotta go back and say, "Oh, I, I, made, I made a mistake on that. Let me fix it." Let, let me erase that. Yeah, you were made a woman because that's what he wanted you to be. You were made a man because that's what he wanted you to be. He didn't want you to go and and he made men and women real quick before you go there. Let me hit this one. Uh, uh, Genesis chapter one verse twenty seven. Mm -hmm. he, he he knew what he was doing in creation. Check this out. Genesis one twenty seven. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Genesis chapter 1 verse 27 uh -huh. So God created man in his own image Right through the wisdom he gave us We were created in his image Go ahead In the image of God created he him Right he created he the, him Come on Male and female Wait male and male Male and female right, but Female and female Male and female Bull dykes and backdoor busters Male and female he Created males and female Kind of because he knew what the hell he was doing. He was trying to cut away that confusion. He knew that there had to be male and female for reproduction, the right thing to do. God. That's how he made it. Forget about what we think. Oh, God made me this way, or the gay gene, or I was born like this. No. Why would he have to create male and females then? Say so he created male and female, created he them. Right? And, and what did he say? Read verse 28. God. And God blessed them. Right? Why did he bless them? Because he created them perfect. God. In the way that he wanted. Go ahead. And God said unto them, uh -huh. be fruitful. Now how can you be fruitful? Being fruitful is go bring forth seed. How can you be fruitful if there's no ground to plant that seed in? <laughs> the, woman was the, the woman was the soil. The man carried the seed. God. That's why he blessed them. That's why he created things the way he did. So two fields don't produce don't produce fruit. Two seeds don't produce fruit. You gotta have that soil to put that fruit that, that seed in. Come if you want to look at it that way. Come so how could you be fruitful if you're dealing with man on man and woman on woman? It don't make sense. Go ahead. And multiply. Come on. And replenish the earth. See, this was the replenishment of the earth. This was the building of Israel, but think about it. In Psalms 83, it said. They wanted to cut us off yep. from being a people. So how do you do it? Well, you give them male and male. Yep. You give them female on female. Right? Yep. And you make pornography and you make all the things that go along with it to make it look cool. That's how you do that. Got they're it. not going to replenish the earth. They're not going to build a nation. They're going to be weak. And, oh, oh, oh. And you give them a little bit of ganja on top of that. So you legalize homosexuality. You legalize weed. Now you just got a bunch of simp, soft, dumb, retarded black folk. Yeah. Effeminate too. You're effeminate. 
that weed smoking, that, that raise your your your, uh, your estrogen levels. Yeah. You get all the feminine, emotional, can't hold things down mentally. Fine. Where we at? Go ahead. And subdue it. Uh, yeah, how you going to subdue it? <laughs> when, when you worried about chasing another man, you trying to subdue the man? You supposed to be the rulers in the earth. But you worried about another man's backside? That's what you want to subdue? Read. And have dominion over the fish of the sea. Come on. And over the fowl of the air. Uh huh. And over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Right. Go ahead. Jump back to where you were. We're going to go to Ecclesiastes. One brother gave me Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 29. Another brother gave me Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 1. Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 1. Just so that if you have like any, Come. any, uh, I guess male homosexual homosexuals <laughs> on YouTube land that's watching or that will watch later on, one thing that you gotta remember is this: read Deuteronomy chapter twenty-three, verse one. Come. On. Go ahead. Oh, it's a lot. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter twenty-three and verse one. Come. On. Deuteronomy ahead. chapter twenty-three, verse one. He that is wounded in the stones, Read. or hath his privy, uh, privy, privy member cut off, shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. So you gotta understand, man. If you're on YouTube land and you're a homosexual male, and you want to take it as far as like the Most High really messed up with you, he made the sun, the moon, the earth, the stars, everything perfect, but not you, and you really feel like you're a woman and Go ahead and get the trans, the trans, uh, just like transvestite, transgender. transgender surgery, so you could be like Bruce Jenner. You gotta understand, man. You will not make it into the kingdom of heaven. You won't be in the congregation. So think about it. The majority of transvestites, they a lot of them commit suicide. There's a high percentage of them that commit suicide. Why are they commit suicide? Because their brain. They're thinking, their mindset is off. So think about it. You're on this earth, and you feel like this, and you're living a very bad life, a very bad lifestyle in your mind. You have no peace in your mind. And now, you don't have no chance of making it to heaven either. So not only are you getting punished in the mindset right now, you're very sorrowful in the mind, but afterwards, when you pass, when you die, and you don't make it to the kingdom of God, and you go to you go to uh, to Hades, hell. You're gonna get tortured there too. You gotta start rethinking some things. So if it, anybody out there on YouTube land that is thinking about doing that, you gotta think about really what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. That's your chances. That's it. There's no coming back from that one. Ain't no coming back. You cut that thing off, it's over. You might as well hang it up. <laughs> But that's why the, the yeah the suicide rate among transgenders is very high. God. I think it's hot. It, it's the highest among every other the, the, the LGBT oh. P community, whatever it is. It's the highest among that community. Because yeah, you do that, man. You're taking yourself into the abyss. You're taking yourself into into uncharted waters. God. So it's very disrespectful for the to the Most High when you do that too. Oh yeah. It's very disrespectful. That's like you. That's like you taught your child how to do something, and your child is still a child, and he and he's in your house or she's in your house, and she does it the complete opposite way that you told them, and they're like, nah. They're only like seven or eight years old, and they're like, nah, you're wrong, mom. You're wrong, dad. And it's like that's 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 very disrespectful. But read that uh, Ecclesiastes chapter seven, verse twenty nine. Ecclesiastes seven, verse twenty nine. Go ahead. Lo, this only I have found. That the Most High hath made man upright. See, the Most High made man upright. He made man perfect. Just like he makes everything else perfect, he made man perfect as well. Read. But they have sought out many inventions. But see, we saw, we seek everything. We seek everything. We're, we're, we're very curious. Like it says, uh, the, the righteous, the way of the right, the way of the righteous. Oh, so righteous is more so they, the, more, the righteous is more excellent than his neighbor. The righteous is more excellent than his neighbor, but the way the, the way of the wicked seduces, seduces him. him. Let's get it. Come on. Yeah. And that's what a lot of us do, man. We get seduced by these spirits. 
And we're not fighting. Yeah, somebody get that. Proverbs chapter uh, what is it? Proverbs chapter 12, and verse 26. Y'all just write it down. Just add it in there. The righteous is more excellent than his neighbor, but the way yeah, of the wicked. Because, because think about it. If we were made in the image of the Most High, in Christ, we have that excellence. The way that we were shown to do things was more excellent than our neighbor. Go ahead. But the way of the wicked. But the what? The way of the wicked. Yeah, the way this society tells you that like, you won't get ahead unless you are a homosexual. Yep. Or, oh, just try it. Or, you know, you know, this is the excuse you get now. Uh, there ain't no good men. Well, you ask a chick, well, how could you like women? Well, there ain't no good men. What the hell are you talking about? There ain't no good men. There's plenty of good men. Just stop getting ran through. Gun. Stop letting the bad ones run through you. Stop picking the bad ones. Gun. Or there ain't no good women out here. Well, stop running through all the, the garbage ones. But that's still not an excuse to go try to reassign your whole gender or chase men if you're a man or be a bull dyke if you're a woman. You're getting seduced by what they show out in the world. And that's all it is, man. They, they, it's like you look at all your little favorite uh, uh, female pop singers, right? They're all, it's funny, you look at them, you're like, damn, this shit could be a lesbian, yeah. right? Beyonce, don't she pass for a, a, just a, a long-haired lesbian, the way she moves? Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga. Rihanna. All of them, man. You, you don't know either way. Like, if she popped up, like, if Rihanna popped up with a chick tomorrow, who would be surprised? Nobody. Nobody. I would. I'd be like, oh, well, I thought she was already bisexual because of the way she moves. All these males, mm -hmm. when it's, it comes out like, oh, this guy got caught with a guy in this, I'm like, oh, well, knew that. That was all over his spirit. He was running around with everything tight, everything waxed, lipstick on. Like, come on, man. Like, the way, but because it, it's about presentation. They present things to you to seduce you. It's like, I want to I want to be, what was the word? Before they called you a homosexual, they called you a metrosexual. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they yeah. tried to hit me with that back in the day. I'm like, nigga, I'm not metro anything. <laughs> right? I'm a heterosexual. I might have walked around nice with a shirt and tie and, and look good. But ain't nothing metro about me. I don't even know what that is. I'm a straight male. But they try to throw these titles to move you over from the middle where you at to the left hand. They, 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 like um, they like to say that you like when you when you're not with the homosexuality. They like to say that you um you're scared of them. So you're scared of them. You're homophobic. But, but they, it's something else. It's like, it's like when you, they say you're scared of them. Uh huh. So that means you you have a little bit of that in you. Oh, like you so scared like, to face your fears? Yeah. So they try to make you lean to it like that. <laughs> but I, the thing is, I'm not scared of none of them. I'll talk to them just like I'm talking to y'all. You, you can't be scared. Like, my, I got an older brother. He's a homophobe. He don't want to be even next to one. But I'm like, okay. Like, they ain't trying to engraft me. They can't engraft. They can't seduce me. I don't want no parts of that. Go ahead. Where you at? It's Proverbs 12, verse 26. Uh -huh. But the way of the wicked seduces it then. Right. See, the way of the wicked seduce it, it takes you out of that excellency. Yeah. Because the way they present things, it's all the way things are presented to our people, man. They make homosexuality look cool. It's like, be a faggot and you get a Gucci belt and, a, and some type of Gucci tote. That's, that's like the, the things that they get. Like, it's weird. I don't know. It's weird, man. Like, do that, bend over, and we'll give you the Gucci slides, the oh, belt you see that, with the headband. You like, see that record deal, man? Yeah. Put you in that Lamborghini, you know. Oh, yeah. You got to get touched on every once in a while. Get, <laughs> you know, what's crazy is that I, I, I just be keeping this, man. It's like, it seemed like once an artist, a male artist gets his hair dyed blonde, it's like, that's like a... Oh, yeah, that's the rap. That's the marking. Yeah, and, and this is what I realized. I'm like... Daniel Caesar, he put out that song, that wonderful song, Helmet, Helmet Her. And um, Brother had dreads, he had the locks. Oh, he cut it? All of a sudden, it's cut and dyed violet. I'm like, yeah, hey, oh, he, oh, hey, he's listen, cause they, they effeminize our males. Gun. They make you into an effeminate male. Like, yeah, you got future. I mean, listen. I'm gonna say this. Even the, even the weekend look more masculine than he does now. He looks like just a, a he looks real soft. But even with the crazy hair and all that, at least I can say like, damn, the dude was rugged. Yeah. Now I'm like, this guy's suspect. Right. <laughs> I know some of y'all don't want to hear that. But anyway, where we at? You know, uh, I was on the point that you were making. I was listening to the blog talk today, 
with Mashallah, and he, and he was bringing out a point how back in the time of the Greeks, when somebody wanted to be an open, an open prostitute, they had to have blonde hair. Oh, the I male, heard that also. The male I seen that. and the female. That was the marking in the, the, the time. The time of the Romans. That's how they marked their prostitutes. Chris Brown. Little and when you look at all the people now, Kanye, Little Frank Kim, Chris Brown, Frank Ocean, everybody got died here. Uh, uh, Cardi B, Nicki Minaj, yep. they all Damn. run around with that blonde. Cisco was the first. Cisco, one. yeah, platinum. <laughs> nah, he had blonde. Uh, I, listen, I, was, I, like, with you listen, I, I remember being right, young in Jamaica, and when Cisco, we all used to say Cisco was gay just because he had the blonde hair. Yeah, just because yeah, he had his like, hair. Yo, blonde. that's gay. Yeah. yeah, we weren't. We weren't. We weren't Anything for a man at one time that was not black, right. it was like that's suspect. suspect. If your jeans was too tight, you wouldn't think about like, yo, this guy's effeminate. The first thing we thought as kids is like, yo, this guy's gay. This guy, if you moved a certain way, if you talked a certain way, if you had that little list, you had that, that earring for hanging some on that right reason, ear. <laughs> they all have the list. It's like, no, that right there ain't right. You're doing that on, pur- you know, things that you did on purpose yep. to present yourself. I'll read that scripture one more time. The righteous is more excellent than his neighbor, but the way of the wicked seduces them. Right. So we don't want to get it. We don't want to look at them and 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 be seduced into their ways in no shape, shape or form, man. Come. Got to be careful. Where we at now? We gonna go to uh. What's up? There was a question online. Uh, go ahead. Go to the next scripture. I get you. Okay. Yeah. Go to Ecclesiastes chapter fifteen, verse eleven. We're going to read it through verse 20. Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha, chapter 15, verse 11 through 20. And this, this is just on the point as well that uh, the Most High made man upright, right? Come on, come on. So go ahead, read, read verse 11. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 15, verse 11. You said the only ones that get a pass are the ones who are born with both male and female genitals. Am I That's how they were made. If that's how they came out, as, lo- as long as you ain't out there trying to switch your you, you know your male parts to female parts and vice versa because you do have the ones that are that are born like that what do they call them Hermaphrodites. right they got a, they, they even have a scientific term for it Garden. so that's how they come out um and you know that's the most high that if he whatever mercy he gives them but that's how they were created they didn't purposely in the womb say hey let me uh, be born with both parts Garden. but even that there's some confusion in that it's like Okay, what parts work? What parts don't? What parts do you use? What parts do you not? Um, who did sin? Yeah, who did <laughs> sin? <laughs> in Roman, you know, who did sin? This man or this child? Like it goes into it goes into a lot where you weren't intended to be. No, you weren't supposed to be born with both parts. Else, that would be the majority. That's the minority. So that goes into something a little bit deeper. So I don't want to say they get a pass, but as far as that's the way they came out. Like you can't blame a person for being born with a birth defect. Cause that's what it is. It's just a birth defect. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Read that verse eleven. Ecclesiastes chapter fifteen, verse eleven. Go ahead. Say not thou, it is through the Lord that I fell away. Yes, because the Most High made man upright. So you can't blame the Most High. You can't blame the Most High for you falling away. Or falling off the natural state of how the Most High sent made things, or the things that you want to do. Go ahead. For thou oughtest not to do the things that he hated. Go ahead. Say not thou, he had caused me to err, for he had not, for he had no need of the sinful man. Yeah, you can't say you can't say the Most High is the one that did this to me. There is no temptation that is not common to man. Everybody's been tempted in some in some way, shape, or form. But this is the thing. Birth, go ahead. The Lord hated all abomination. Yeah, the most high hated all abomination, man. So we gotta understand that, read. And they that fear God love it not. Yeah, we we're the ones that fear the most high, so we do not we don't care for it. We can't love it, we can't condone it. We can't we we, we gotta we got to be the ones with the wisdom and understanding of the Most High, being the light of the world. We got to be the ones that, yeah, who shall rise up against me against the evil doors? We got to be the ones that can help them, that can change them. Go ahead. He himself made man from the beginning. So the Most High made man, right? 
Like the scripture said, he made man upright. Go ahead. And left him in the head of his counsel. And you were left in, in, in your own counsel. He gave you choices. So you have a choice. You always had a choice. The Most High made you upright, and you were left with a choice. So whatever decision that you make, that's on you. Go ahead. If thou wilt to keep the commandments and to perform acceptable faithfulness. <laughs> yeah, yeah you, can, you can keep the commandments if you want to. That's up to you. But if not, go ahead. He had set fire and water before thee. Yeah, we all had that fire and that water set before us. We got good and bad. Evil and righteousness. We all have it set before us. It's up to us. Go ahead. Let me not jump. Stretch forth thy hand unto whether thou wilt, before man is life and death. Go ahead. And whether him like it shall be given him. Yeah, so if you like life, you would go the opposite. You would go the opposite of that spirit. Because guess what, man? We all got, like we're going to go into it, but we all have things that we're battling. We all have negative defaults and negative spirits that's around us that we all have to fight. It's just that that's the one that you have to deal with. That's the one that you're dealing with. You got a homosexual spirit. That's what you're dealing with. Somebody else got a got a drunken spirit. Somebody else can't stop getting high. Somebody else got got a stealing spirit. Got a murderous spirit. Got a porno spirit. And it's just that it's just that you got a homosexual spirit. So. It's messed up because the world condones it. The world condones it, and they're not trying to make it. They're not trying to make it be what it is—a mental illness. And when I say a mental illness, I just mean like a, your, your mind is screwed. Your mind ain't thinking right. No different. No different than a drunkard. No different than a man that really thinks that he has to sell crack and destroy his own people to make it. So when you think about it. When you think about it, a lot of, like you were saying, like your older brother, he's a homophobe. So he won't speak to a gay person. But the thing is this, like you'll speak to a murder, you'll, you'll speak to a murderer. You'll speak to a crackhead. You'll speak to a drug dealer. Yeah, he'll talk to the weed man. You'll, t you'll talk to the weed man. And you'll try to change them. You'll, you'll, you'll talk to a stripper, a prostitute, and try to show them, hey, look, this is what the Most High says. This is what's going to happen to you if you don't change. Look, you's a king and a queen. Why are you acting like that? And it's the same thing with, a, with somebody that's homosexual. You got the ones that's pride of being, they're, they're very prideful in their, in, in, in their homosexualness. They're not going to listen to you. They don't want to hear the book. They don't want to hear the word. They'll tell you, I grew up in church. Don't, don't hit me with all that. Mm -hmm. But then you have some that's literally, they're confused. They don't know. Listen, when I was a, uh, when I was 17, I was working at Ross. The supervisor was a tranny. That was my first time even seeing a tranny. <laughs> and he was a supervisor trying to be a woman. And I remember one time, I don't even know why, that, why he started doing this. But he was just like, bro, I'm confused. He was like, I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know what to do. I'm 17. I'm like, <laughs> bro, you're like 29. <laughs> like, why are you telling me this? But... He was literally crying out for help, like, bro, like, I don't know what to do. Like, he already, he already had the surgery to get the, the, the breast implants. Yep. But he's like, I, I don't know what to do. Like, I'm confused. I don't know. So a lot of them, man, they're confused. And it's no different than us. It's no different than us when, when we can't stop smoking weed or we're drinking too much. When we know that if Christ came back right now and he caught us smoking weed or he caught us being a drunkard, or you caught us being, a, being an, 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 an adulterer, an idolater. We're abusing ourselves. If Christ came back right now and seen us, he's not going to accept that. He's not. So it's the same with them. They're not. They're, go, go to it. Yeah, go, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. Let's just hit it. First Corinthians chapter six verse nine. You can drop that, Max. First Corinthians chapter six verse nine. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? So yeah, don't read. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Read. 
Be not deceived. Yes, yeah, so be not deceived, folks. Be not deceived. Don't let the churches try to fool you. Don't let the Kardashians with, 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 with Bruce Jenner try to fool you. Because they had a thing where they, where they were telling him that there were gay people in the Bible. They gave that, that coat of uh that coat of many colors that Joseph had was like a dress or something. So don't be deceived. Don't let these pastors trick you. Read. Neither fornicators. You're a fornicator. Nor idol adulterers. Sorry. No, nor idolaters. Go ahead. Nor nor adulterers. So that, so that fornication, chasing after chasing after other gods. That idolatry, putting things over the most high. Go ahead. You doing these things. Listen, let's be real. The scripture says there's, there's no sin greater than any other sin. Kind. So if you're doing these things, you ain't going to make it. See, a lot of people, they're like, oh, you know, the homosexuality, I can't deal with that. I can't talk to them. You got teachers that, you got teachers that are supposed to be teaching the word, that are supposed to be waking our people up. They're in that mind state. Like, oh, yeah, I can't deal with them. I can't talk to them. But what about these people? You wake them up, you deal with them. Yep. Watch, read on. God. Nor adulterers. Especially adulterers. Because that's probably the biggest one in our nation right now. Everybody is not everybody is bragging about sleeping with another man's woman. Yeah, every 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 dude is missing I stole your girl. All right. Every chick is creeping with somebody else's husband. Gun. That's the mentality of my people. But that and that is very disgusting. I said, I'm a flirt. Yeah, that that is very filthy. You're destroying not. homes. Gun. Go ahead. Nor effeminate. Nor what? Effeminate. Nor what? Effeminate. So we gotta understand, man. Don't let your pastor fool you. If you're effeminate, you're not gonna make it. Yeah, if you even acting like a if you are a man even acting like a woman, to be effeminate is a man having female traits. Yeah. Listen, man. If, if, if if somebody, if you're a man and somebody says that you're pretty, no, that you're cute, that you're cute, mm -hmm. that gotta ring a bell, man. Something gotta change. Yeah, don't call me cute. Right. Yeah, yeah, I can't, I can't keep wearing. That's a cute outfit. What I, what I, whatever I'm wearing right now, I can't do that. My hairstyle, that, that gotta go. Listen, I remember when I was in Jamaica, my cousin. <laughs> this last time I was there, my cousin was like, "Oh, you're a pretty boy." I was like, "What the? What? <laughs> oh, bro, it was that was it." I, I came, when I came back to the States, I grew my hair out. No more cutting, no more waves, no, no more clean face. <laughs> None of that. None of that. We can't we can't have that effeminate spirit on us, man. Because you see, you see it in the world. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. And that's why there's so much confusion. That's why there's so that's why the world is so out of course. Because look at what they're pushing. Look at what they're doing to us. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, they're just commenting online. Homosexuality was once labeled as a mental disorder. That was a clinical diagnosis. Yeah, but think about it. They they label it as a mental disorder, but then what 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 drugs do you give a homosexual? What pills do you give them? You don't. There's no pills to change. Listen, homosexuality is a spirit. Yeah, it's a spirit of lust. It's a deep, deep lust. You see it on their face, man. Yeah, it's just all lust. Them. Those those relationships never work out. Nope. They they're not gonna make. Listen, it's not gonna make it into the kingdom. So it ain't love. God. The Most High don't look at it like, oh yeah, that's a marriage, that's honor. It's all it's just lust. So there is no pills. You if you because when you clinically diagnose something, you gotta have the pills and the medication to back it up. God. There ain't no pill you give a homosexual to change them. Because you can pill him up all you want. He's going to get out and just go look for the next dude to, to be with. Okay. So they have to change the diagnosis. Now you're born like that. <laughs> That's where they get that from. It's a choice. Now it's a choice. It's a choice or you're born like that. Because we don't want to drug you. Y'all understand that? So okay. you got to see. These things are spirits that are on our people. They're deep, deep, deep lust. Okay. You might have the, the chick that was molested, yeah. you know, uh, as a child. And then she grows up and she's just super promiscuous. Yep. You have the little boy that was molested as a child. He grows up to be the homosexual. But then when you go further back into his line, grandpa done molested the, all the cousins. Yep. And they all got sketchy backgrounds because of that one person, that one spirit that's in their house. That spirit that lingers. You touch this little boy, you touch this little girl, now she's 15, having a thousand kids. 
that he's not he's you know eight years old walking around like a woman this cousin is the same thing 11 with a bunch of kids there's they're not understanding what love is but they know about that physical carnal aspect of all the sexuality they're over sexualized that's where this stuff comes from when you go back into people's history you just ask a man who molested you who touched on you as a kid oh it'd be a cousin an uncle a grandpa 90 percent 99 percent you know umar johnson would talk about it i don't really watch him too much but he's a clinical psychologist or psychiatrist he tells you it's not no it's not no gene that you weren't born like that he tells you a lot of these a lot of his patients 90 percent of them tell would tell him that they were touched on God. in some way they were molested they were raped let's not forget about that God. they were raped at a young age mm -hmm. so what does that do to the psychosis of a young girl that a five-year-old girl that's probably raped what does that do to her outlook on men it's either she hates him or she loves him yeah either she's gonna turn out to be a whore a harlot or she's gonna reject men all the way yeah. and go to the other side because women know how I feel. They, they know how I want to be touched. That's the thought process. It's the same thing with little boys. So, you know, we gotta be sensitive. We, we do have to be sensitive in a, in, a, in a way to what everybody's dealing with, Got to it. all these spirits. Because something something happened, something did that. Right, it's almost like a, like the 2K, right? Yeah, like, case, oh, yeah, yeah. All yeah. the cats got touched. Orion, yeah. uh, down the list, Raz, like Marcus Houston, Raz B. But now you see why they are. Yeah. The yeah. way they are, where it's like, damn, these dudes is gay. I always yeah. thought B2K and them cats was gay. They was God. getting literally fondled. But now I see on. why they was getting fondled. In the house together, sleeping up with the grown yeah. man, got the teddy bear. His damn cousin yeah. was, was molesting him. But now I get it. I'm like, oh, okay, you were being molested. Yeah. So your innocence was being took. You know, so yeah, do we got to be sensitive to. What our people are going through, of course, mm -hmm. of course. So, do we bash them? No. Do we trot them down and act like they ain't nothing? No. But we gotta be there to help them. Go ahead, read on. Come. Hey, Go. actually, jump to uh, do this. Jump to James chapter four verse four. Yeah. I'm gonna, where you at? Yeah. Let's get all this. Come. Yeah. James chapter 4 verse 4 and before you read this James chapter 4 verse 4 right check this out it says be not I'm gonna read it real quick it says be not be not deceived neither fornicators adulterers idolaters effeminate nor abusers with themselves of mankind nor thieves covetous drunkards nor revelers nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God so you gotta see check and ask yourself damn which one of these was me which one of these was me? <laughs> in, my, in my past life, right? In your past life, before you woke up. In your past life, or when you woke up in the truth. What were you doing? Well, and when I say Which past one? life, I mean the old man. Okay. Put off the old man, put on the new. When I say past life, I'm not talking about your past life 100 years ago. Got I'm talking about your past life in the world. When you were a little thief. When you was running around to the damn CVS stealing lipstick and chapstick and fake eyelashes. When you was stealing bundles. When you was drunk in the club, you know, when you were an idolater, the Nike, Nike was your god. When you was a fornicator and a little a little harlot running around. Yeah. Okay, we all got demons. Got it. So yeah, which one of these were you? Exactly. <laughs> and how did you get from that state? Right? Where are you gonna go? Somebody else give me first John chapter two verse sixteen. Read this James chapter four verse four verse four. Because there's something that we got to understand about all these things that we just said. All of them. Read that James, James verse 4, verse 4. Come, ye adulterous and adulteress, adulteresses, adulteresses. Oh, you got it. Read it. Read, adulteresses. Read it again. Ye adulterers uh -huh. and adulteresses, uh -huh. know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. So when we were, when we had those characteristics in us, even the effeminate characteristics, that's enmity with the Most High. Straight up, 100%, point blank. That's enmity with the Most High. You are, you are an enemy of God. Exactly. You weren't, you weren't a friend of the Most High. He wasn't looking at you like, oh, you out there committing adultery? My son! He was like, this wicked Negro. Gun. I'm going to get him. I'm going to beat him with stripes. You are an enemy of the Most High, man, when you were doing these things. Go ahead. Whosoever, therefore, 
will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. So when you were a fornicator, idolater, adulteress, effeminate, abuses, uh, you're abusing yourself for mankind, and the list goes on, you were an enemy of the Most High. Verse, uh, 1 John chapter 2, verse 16. I'm trying to hurry up. And then, you, and then somebody else go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 11. 1 John chapter 2, verse 16. Go ahead. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh. So all those that all those things that we just named, that's what's in the world. And the, most of them, if not the majority of them, is the lust is the, is the lust of your own flesh. Read. And the lust of well, the eyes. Well, they all are. To be a drunkard, that's your own lust. Gun. To be a thief, a covetous, a, an adulterer, a murderer, effeminate, that's all your own lust. Catering to your own lust. So they all are the lust of the flesh. Go and ahead. That, and, and that's why it's enmity with God. Because... You're, you're catering to yourself and not to the most high. You're catering to your lust and not to and not to the spirit, read. Right? The lust and the lust of the eyes Go. and the pride of life is not of the Father, but it's of the world. Now, if somebody jumps to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 11. So this is what we got to understand, man. That's not of the Father. That's not of the Father. That's of the world. Go ahead. 1 John chapter 2, verse 16. First Corinthians. First Corinthians. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, that's right, that's right. First Corinthians chapter six, verse eleven. God. First Corinthians chapter six, verse eleven. And such were some of you. Yeah, and some of us were. We had these characteristics. A lot of us had these characteristics. But what did it take? It took a man. It took a man to sit down and show us. Look, you can't be like this. It took a man to have patience with us and put up with us being. With us, with us being adulterers, abusing ourselves, being thieves, covetous, drunkards, revelers. It took somebody to sit down and have patience with us and, and to actually show us. So unfortunately, the thing is this. If, if, if the homosexual thing is so big right now in 2019, and a lot of these kids is growing up in this, a lot of them we're going to have to teach. And a lot of them we're going to have to show and we're gonna have to try to change them and help to convert them. Because that's the work of the most high. The most, it says the scripture says that the most that that the whole need not of the need not of a physician, but the sick. You're sick, man. Are people sick? You see them out there in the streets. They need help. God. And we're the physician, we're the doctors. Not a physical doctor, but we're the spiritual doctors. We're being trained to be spiritual, spiritual surgeons. Spiritual nurses, where we can where we, where we can literally change a person, change their whole life. The only thing that can change a home man, the only thing that can change a homosexual, uh, somebody that has a, a tremendous amount of lust, somebody that can't stop drinking, it's always the word. The word can change anything, so that's what we got to do. Like we can't we can't just look down. We can't look down on them. We can't hate them. Because guess what? They ain't do nothing to you. They hurting themselves. They think they live in their best life. When really they hurting themselves. We don't hate the drug dealer. We talk to the drug dealer. We hate the act. Yeah, we hate the act. I don't know this person. I can't hate them, but I hate what you're doing. It's not righteous. What are you going to say? Yeah, something brief. Uh, I know a guy, homosexual, uh, he, he felt the need to uh, tell me about why he is but to make a long story short it takes a, a lot of compassion because the guy like his dad was not in the home his dad was a crackhead he was raised by his mom and he was just telling me he was like man when i was in high school i had a boyfriend like he used to hold the dude's hand and i just i was just listening to the guy not judging him just trying to make the right strides long i mean the sad part is you know dude is on the um praise team, like effeminate, doing twirls and stuff like oh, yeah. that. It's like, he's trying, you know, but You know, it's crazy. Just think about it. The majority of us, one of the curses in Deuteronomy is that the father's going to leave the children. So just think of how many of our, how many of the Israelites, all 12 tribes, grew up without, without, without fathers. And then unfortunately, a lot of those fathers, even the ones that have fathers, their, their, their mind is messed up. So those same fathers might touch, might touch their own kids. Oh. But worse, 
You were gonna say? Uh, yeah, the pastor that was just found out that he was having sex with his daughter for like the last seven years. She was like, I think she was like eight years old. Oh. You know, yeah, it was, it was actually it was a Judite pastor, man, which is sad. It's very sad. Mm -hmm. But think about it. The majority of the majority of our of our kids, man, they grow up without without fathers in the household, without that guidance, without that protection. So now it's just the mother. So now that child, that, that, that man doesn't know how to be around a man and deal with other men. So now he's naturally gonna be a little effeminate because he's being raised by his mother, his grandma, his aunties, yeah. his cousins that are women. That's what he's around. So now you think about it, this man grows up without a father and there's all these things that, 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 that they took crafty counsel on our people against. And any, anything can happen to him. Anything. He doesn't have the guidance. He doesn't have that hedge around him. Same thing for the woman. Same thing for the little girls. So we got to... I'm not... We don't condone homosexuality. We know that. But we do got to start having a slight bit of, con of uh, compassion to where we can change them. If you don't want to be changed, man, that's on you. That's on you. We're not going to condone it. We're not going to put up on it. But put up with it. And how do we justify that? Go to go to go to uh, go to Ezra. Go to Second Ezra seven. <clears throat> yeah, because we don't con we don't condone it. We de but we can't condemn neither. Gone. Right? We don't condone the act. We don't condone that spirit, but we can't condemn a homosexual a homosexual to death. But let's see how Abraham, because was not Abraham around during the time of the uh, Sodomites? Gone. And let's see what Abraham did. Let's see what Abraham did when it came to these Sodomites. Go on, go on. Second Ezra 7. Read that. Second Ezra 7, uh, verse 1. Verse no, 36. Verse 36. Second Ezra 7, verse 36. Because again, we don't condone, but we don't condemn. So what do we do? Because we, what is it about? Is it about casting our people off or rebuilding them and restoring them to health? Right. If this was crafty counsel that was taken on our people, then we got to understand that. We got to say, okay, if they took crafty counsel against our people, and, sh you know, uh, before you go there, go to Psalms 106 real quick. Go to Psalms 106 and 35. Seven, right? Go to Psalms 106. How were you at in, in Ezra's? Go ahead, go ahead. Psalms chapter 106, verse 35. Come on. But were mingled among the heathen. Right, see, our people were mingled amongst the heathen. Go ahead. And learned their work. We did what? Learned their work. Yeah, we were mingled and we learned their works, the works of the heathen. Come on. And they served their idols. Right, and we served their idols, man. So whatever homosexual idol they had propped up for us to chase, we chased it. Yep. But what do they do now? They say, listen, if you if you if you bend over. And give it up, you, you're going to live this type of lifestyle. We idolize this fake, false American dream. We idolize it, man. We idolize the jobs that they dangle in front of us, the cars. You got to live this certain lifestyle to get this. Or you got to do this homosexual lifestyle. And because you know what? You know what? You don't have to involve your feelings. You won't get hurt. Our people look at, our people look at things so, everything is so carnal and simple to our people. Right? But it said we learn their works. Come on. Which were a snare unto them. Which were a what? A snare unto them. So these homosexual works, that's our snare. These are the things that got us in captivity. These are the things that got us taken away from the Most High. Now, now our people are, in, are deeply embedded into this lifestyle. Whether they're actually gay or not. Because you got the ones that are doing the acts and they're not truly, I don't know how that works. Well, uh, I mean, I don't know how that works. But you got people that claim not to be gay and they're still having sex with men. I'm not gay. I have sex with women. I just like sexuality. That's another excuse. I'm, I'm open. I'm, I'm open. So do we condemn them? Do we say, well, you wicked, you garbage, away from me? No. Did Christ do that? No. Of course not. Let's go to Second Ezra seven. Okay. Go to Second Ezra seven. Thirty-six. And verse thirty-six. 
Second Ezra 7, verse 36. Uh-huh. Then said I, uh-huh. Abraham, pray first for the Sodomites. Wait, who did Abraham pray for? First for the Sodomites. Wait, so he prayed for the Sodomites. Did he run up on them and, and we know that he had to go get Lot, right? He ran up and he ran up in Sodom and Gomorrah and got Lot. Yep. Right? But he said he prayed for the Sodomites. Now the Sodomites weren't even his people. So how much more do we gotta try to help our people come out of the condition? If we know it's crafty counsel, if we know Psalms 83, they 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 uh they they make a tomo right. to try to catch us in these snares. Then how much more are we supposed to stand up and try to get our people right? Or do we shut them away? Do we say, oh, you a, you, you, you a homo. I can't talk to you. I can't deal with you. Uh, Any cat that's living that lifestyle, I can't talk to him. But he might need the healing. He might need the help. Right? God. Uh, Again, did Christ did he turn away the ones that needed to be healed? Uh, What's up? Where we at? Right? Go to Luke chapter 5 and verse 31. What's up? Let me finish that Oh, yeah. I'm, I, I got that. Oh, yeah, I'm in there. Luke <laughs> chapter 5 and verse 35. Read. 5 and 31. Luke chapter 5 and verse 31. So this is the one thing that Yahweh Shai understood. Read. And Jesus answering said unto them. Uh huh. Wait, hold on. Let's read up real quick. God. Let's read up. Where we got to read up at? Luke chapter 5. Damn, my bad. Luke 5 and verse. Oh, here it is. Go up. Read verse 30. Verse 30. Uh huh. But, the, but their scribes and Pharisees murmured against his disciples. Right? Say, why do ye eat and drink? With publicans and sinners. Right. Why do you eat and drink with publicans and sinners? The publicans were the tax collectors. They were they were unjustly collecting taxes. The publicans, the sinners, right? Now, does it go in and say what sins they were doing? Wow. They could have been doing anything, right? God. You might have had a homosexual or two sitting right at the table. Hey, that, that was the age of the Romans. And that was the Roman Empire, so yeah. what were our people doing? It just said it. We were mingled amongst the heathen and learned their works. God. The works of the heathen. Homosexuality. Bestiality. Um, pedophilia. Pedophilia. All types of lewd acts. It wasn't just murdering and stealing. Come on, man. Let's not be naive. Let's not be naive, man. You thought what well, you thought? It was just adultery? That's all the nations did? Wow. Oh, they committed adultery. They stole and they murmured. Wow. Come on, man. They did it all. God. We were mingled and we learned. Think about it. We thought that we were Romans. As a, what, what's the saying? As, a Roman. as, as in Rome, do as the Romans do. Romans. Do as the Romans. Absolutely. Right? So when we were in Rome, we were doing as the Romans. God. Well, now we know that the Romans came and occupied, right, Jerusalem and Israel. God. God. But you think they didn't bring their little filthy traditions? Of course they did. You think our people weren't trying to be Romans? Like how our people are trying to be Americans now? Well, they reverse circumcise themselves just to be like them to fit in and That's go in their naked name. houses. Right. That's what I was going to say. They did all that. But my I, the point I'm trying to bring out is it said he sat with publics, publicans and sinners. Right. We don't know what manner of sin they were doing. You had all types of filth oh, yeah. that Christ openly went to. For what, though? To go kick it with them? To go be like them? Uh, Read on. Verse 31. And Jesus answering said unto them, Come on. They that are whole. They that are what? Whole. Read. Need not a physician. Come on. But they that are sick. But they that are sick. Because all these different things we read in Corinthians, they were sicknesses. They were diseases. They were spirits. God. That murdering spirit, that adulterous spirit, that covetous spirit, that idolatrous spirit, that homosexual effeminate spirit. God. You think there was no effeminates in Christ's time? Of course, you think there was a cat running around with li lipstick, lipstick, right. Kool Aid on their lips? Cats had pink shawls on and you they was, bracelets and toes painted. Yeah, you think they wasn't pricking their finger to rub it on their lips to make their lips look lipsticky? Yeah. They did that. Come on, man. They do that in jail. Cats would put Kool Aid on their lips so they'll prick their finger and rub the blood on their lips for their lips to look more like it got lipstick on it. You think they wasn't doing that? Mm. 
I know you got what? What you got? Oh uh, no, the uh, in in Ecclesiastes in the Bible it says that uh, there's nothing new under the sun. What has been will be. Right. So the, the so the filth that was in Sodom and Gomorrah came to to, to the uh, Grecians, went to the Romans, and now it's in America. Right. right. So there's so, no, there's no new filth that hasn't been in. Right. Like it, the scripture says, look and see, this is new. No, there, there's nothing new. There's nothing new. So Christ dealt with it all. Right. But see, even the Pharisees were like, why are you sitting with them? Yeah. Well, because they that are sick need to be healed. Christ wasn't sitting there discriminating. Because in, in a way, the reason why I'm bringing this out this point is because why? You do have brothers that's like, oh yeah, I'm not teaching no fags. If you're dealing with that, I'm not messing with you. Listen, they all any any anything can be reformed. There is no sin greater than the other. You offending one, you offending them all. Right? I'm gonna get there. Read on. Read on. Verse 32. Uh-huh. I came not to call the righteous. I came not to what? Call the righteous. Come on. But sinners. But the sinners, read. To repentance. Right, because those are the ones that need to turn back from their ways. But what sin? Did, it, did, it, does, did Christ come to deal with just one matter of sin? Wow. Are you a thief? Are you an adulteress? Or no, he came to deal with all sin. Come. Watch, we're gonna get there. Go to Luke 4:33. Luke chapter 4, verse 33. Uh-huh. And in the synagogues, there was a man uh -huh. which had a spirit of unclean devil. He had a spirit of what? Of an unclean devil. Now, you think the devil is just going to come one way? La. The devil is going is to give you all manner of temptation. God. They said he had a spirit of an unclean devil. Mm. Did Christ sit back and say, well, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. What sin you working with, brother? Right. Hold on there, man. Because if you're dealing with that murderous spirit, yeah. I can't heal you. Or if you're rocking with that covenant spirit, I can't mess with that right now. Right. I ain't talking to that. Right. It said he had a spirit of an unclean devil. Obviously, he doesn't go in direct on what it was, but that could have been anything. But my point is, Christ wasn't discriminating like how we get into our minds like, oh, yeah, 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 they can't be around me. I can't touch them. I can't even look at them. Right. Man, how you going to heal them? It says when you convert a sinner... A multitude of your sins will be forgiven. God. So what if the only thing you can convert is that homosexual? Hmm. Is that lesbian? You know what I mean? Lesbian chicks, we done switched. And not in that way. I mean, showing them like, listen, that's not what you was made for. That's not what the most I created you for. Scriptures. They know it's wrong. You can tell the ones in their spirit right. where they're just beat down and, and depressed. And you're like, what's the matter, baby? Mm -hmm. Right? You talk to them like, like, like you their mama? And you start, and they're like, yeah, you know, I deal with this, I deal with this. And you start to show them, well, yeah, you deal with that, but then look what it's yielding. Yeah. And you start to hit them that way, and they're like, damn, you got a point. Yeah. Next thing you know, four, year, four years later, they pop up with a baby and a husband. That's happened. Oh, God. I got a friend right now, Megan Cole. That's happened. Yeah. That's happened where we've converted these sinners. Not like how, how Jake be thinking, like, yeah, I'm going to give her the rod of correction and change her. Or oh, let me convert you. No. It's through the wisdom. It's through the word. It says the word heal of all things. Gone. Right? Gone. Read on. And cried out with a loud voice. Come on. Say, let us alone. Uh huh. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Come on. Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art. Read from there. Jump to Luke. In Luke. Jump to Luke chapter 9, verse 1. Luke. Chapter 9, verse 1. God. So we're Luke, seeing, you got that? Luke chapter 9, verse 1. Read. Then he called his, his 12 disciples together. So not only did Christ deal with all manner of sin, he called his, his 12 disciples, come on, and gave them power uh -huh. and authority over all devils. Wait, over what? All devils. Wait, only to some of the devils. All devils. Only some of the negative spirits. All devils. Yeah, he gave them authority over all filth. To destroy it, to heal, read, and to cure diseases, and to do what? To cure diseases. Come on, read. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God, uh huh, and to heal the sick. But only the ones that were sick with like the murderous spirit. To heal the sick. No, only the ones that had issues of blood. To heal the sick. Come on. Mm -hmm. And he said unto them, Take nothing for your journey, right? Neither staffs nor script. That's it on that. From there. Wait a minute. From there, go to Matthew 12 and verse 31. Can I say one thing? Of course. I was going to say, too, remember the scripture says that unless the Most High had left us a remnant, 
We all I, I, have I Sodom and Gomorrah. I don't want to use that one. There's another scripture in Revelations where it says that this place is going to be in Sodom and Egypt. So a lot of us, we, we, we heal... We heal the Egypt side where our, where our brothers and sisters, we got the Egypt mentality. And it, yeah, yeah, we're, we're, we, we like to be captives. We like to run to, 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 to Egypt, to use Egypt as a covering instead of the most high. We like to heal those things, but a lot of us, we don't like to mess with that Sodomite. Is it but, but a lot of people forget that the Egyptians were Sodom. Exactly. They were doing Sodomite-ish acts. They were homosexuals too. When you're running and heal. Come on, man. They run around with the unk, talk about it's the man's phallus and this and all this stuff, and they wear it around their neck. But you'll sit there and you'll chop it up with him like, see, the Egypt the Egyptology is off. And, and you got a thousand scriptures to cast out those imaginations. Con, con. What about heal the other side? What about healing the other side of that where they talking about uh, the sperm on a man's leg and all the phallical things that they got on their walls and you don't want to deal with that. We got to be able to be equipped to deal with both sides. Go to Matthew 12, 31. Matthew chapter 12 and verse 31. So why did Christ give the apostles? Why did Christ have the spirit on him to, to clean all manner of sin? Well, this is why. Read. Wherefore I say unto you. Come on. All manner of sin. Wait. Some sin. All manner of sin. Wait, only like four or five sins. All manner of sin. Come on. And blasphemy Read. shall be forgiven. Unto men. Right, so is sodomy not a sin? God. So is hatred. So is uh, adultery. So it, it's all, when you boil it all down and simplify it, it's all against the commandment. God. So if you offend in one commandment, you offend in all. God. You break one, you break them all. God. So we got to start looking at things in the bigger picture. Are we here to win souls? God. Or are we here to condemn our people? When so, listen, they're gonna, they're gonna, like the scriptures say, Christ is not coming to the world to condemn. John 3 17. It said that God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but by him the world shall be saved. God. Right? So, how are you gonna save somebody if you don't wanna talk to them? Because they're dealing with a certain type of spirit. Yeah, I know it's disgusting. I know it's filthy. I know it's nasty. I know it, it, it well, it only makes the, if you're uncomfortable dealing with, these demons, then you need to get comfortable, right? Because I, I, I was, yeah, you need to study or something. Because I can, I can sit there and talk to anybody and show them their rights, their wrongs. I don't care what gender you are, what gender you think you are, what demons you got on you. I got a cat that comes to the mall, man, and he does this to me when he walks up. You hate me, don't you? Oh, Esau. You oh, hate yeah. me, don't you? And he's like, you're scared of me, and I'm standing here like, bro, no, I'm not scared of you. You're possessed. What demon you got on you? What, what's the name of your demon? He'll walk by and look at and he'll look, Yeah, and he'll just laugh it off like, <laughs> I've had sodomites. You got to put them in their place. I remember the other day I had three at the cart. And they were sitting there like trying to, trying to, man, you know, you know how they, uh, they're so biased. It's funny, man. Because they don't want you to speak out against what they're doing, but they'll use their homosexual little tendencies and ways to try to belittle you. Right. So I just have to roll in wisdom. Like, these cats, these cats are off. These cats are wrong. Mm -hmm. Right? Come. Yeah, take that. Go ahead. Read on. God, wherefore, I say unto you, Come on. all manner of sin and blasphemy uh -huh. shall be forgiven unto men. Right. But the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit right. shall not be forgiven. Right. This is the, the one sin that won't be forgiven. Go ahead. Unto men. Verse 32. Read. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, read. It shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Spirit, right. it shall not be forgiven. So the point I was trying to make was in 31. Read, read it one more time. Wherefore I say unto you, uh -huh. all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. Right. All manner of sin. Now, Yahweh Shai rolled in this spirit. Who else rolled in the spirit? Go to 1 Corinthians 9 and verse 20. 1 Corinthians 9 verse 20 because the scriptures say to teach faithful men that shall te uh, 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 teach others also. hand down things to faithful men that will teach others also. Who was who was uh, who was following Yahweh Shai? It was Paul. Right? God. Read that. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 20. Verse 20. Come on. And to the Jew, I became as a Jew. Right? Because 
What did Paul appear as? As a Jew. He appeared as a Jew, but then sometimes he appeared as a Roman. God. Because he had that dual citizenship, but he had to switch up. God. So, listen, the Jews that he appeared to, if the if the sick needeth not a physician or needs a physician, he was appearing to sick Jews. Right? God. He had to appear to sick Jews that were in in, in, in all manner of sin. He had to be able to assimilate, not be like them, not be them or, or do what they do, but he had to at least be able to sit next to a man and reason with him and say, well, yeah, you're dealing with this, you're a murderer? Well, I ain't going to be scared because you're a murderer. You're a homosexual? I'm not going to be thrown off my rocker and lose my hold and, and be insecure in my manhood because I'm, I'm dealing with a, a man that's a homosexual. Because what was Paul's purpose? Read. That I might gain the Jews. That I might do what? Gain the Jews. What was Paul trying to do? Gain the Jews. Right, so he had to deal with the sick. See, our people got to see it, man. We got to wake up. We got to stop being so, you're so, it's like trying to be selective. Like, yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'll am I'm go deal with the killers and the murderers, but these soft cats I can't deal with. They need help too. Paul wasn't selective. Paul popped up and was ready. Yahweh Shai popped up. They was ready to go. Where, where the, who want that smoke? Who want that action? They was ready, man. They didn't sit there and discriminate because you had a certain demon on you. Greed. God, that I might gain the Jews uh -huh. to them that are under the law. Right. As under the law. Right. That I might gain them that are under the law. Read on. To them that are without See, the law. Paul, Paul had to be a, a, a master manipulator. If, if you was about the law, guess what? I'm dealing with you in the law. Straightforward. Boom, boom, cut and dry. He said to them that are under the law as under the law. Go ahead, read on. To them that are without the law. Right. As without law. Read. Not being without law. You see that? So, to them that were without, were without the law, he was without the law, but not to the most high. He wasn't breaking the law. It might have looked like he was doing something, but he wasn't breaking the law. He moved a certain way where, I know I got to win this guy. I know I got to win this person. So I'm going to have to make myself maybe appear with him. I got to sit with him. Right? I got to sit here and talk to him. He might be whatever he might be doing. But I'm sitting here trying to win him. I'm not doing what he's doing. The only way to get to the publicans and sinners, you got to get to them. The only way we're going to get to our people is we got to get to the hoods, right? So the only way to heal our people, sometimes you got to, I'm not saying you got to run up in a homosexual club. I'm not saying that. Hell not. Scripture says stay from all appearances of evil, right? So you know, I'm not saying run up in a homo club like, yeah, I'm teaching Nah, there's a time and place for all things. But you might have to be able, you might have to stand next to a cat that people know is a homosexual, but you're trying to win him. You ain't trying to be what he is. Like your family members. Even you, you might have family. You might have family. I got, I, got a, I got a second cousin that's in that. You know, and I, I be throwing scriptures out there. He be liking them. Like this, that. He went and got him a little wife. I'm not saying I did anything. Yeah, he went and he got a little wife now. I'm like, wow. So who knows though? It says all manner of sin can be forgiven. Read on. But under the law of Yahweh Shai. But go ahead. But, uh, what's the law of Yahweh Shai? What was he wasn't discriminating because of what you were dealing with. If you needed to be healed, he did it. He sat with you. He sat with the publicans and sinners. He had the disciples do it too. Because it wasn't about discriminating against our people. We know what they're dealing with. We ain't holier than thou, but that's the mind we get. I'm going to be holier than thou. So now I can't help you. Now I can't convert your sins. Now I can't bring you to the light. I'm better than you. I'm better than you. Go ahead. That I might gain them that are without the law. Come on. To the weak became I as weak. Right. That I might gain the weak. Come, and that's what it was always about. How do I gain this man? He had his wives, but his souls. That's Proverbs. I keep quoting it. Proverbs 11 and 30. Read on. I have made all things to all men. I made, wait, I'm only made a few things. I have made all things to all men. This was Paul being able to condescend to men of low estate. He was able to lower himself off of whatever pedestal and bring himself into the dirt so he could pull you back up. God. That's what we got to get better at as Israelite men. God. Yeah, it's it, homosexuality is filthy, it's nasty. Lesbianism, 
lesbianism is filthy and nasty. And we ain't sitting here talking about, oh, the homos are nasty and the, the lesbians are good. No, it's all filthy. It ain't like Jake in the world, like, yeah, I don't like that homo stuff, but I'll watch some lesbians. No, it's all abominable. It's all filthy. But you got to make yourself available to be able to help and not condemn. We deal with them a lot, man. We in the mall. We deal with them a lot. So you got to know how to maneuver. We become all things to all men. And I like it. Become all things is understanding how to... How to, to open that spirit up to where you can actually change them, man. To where yeah. they feel comfortable. Really, it's, they're so thrown off. It's where you're making yourself open to them to where they're comfortable to even share anything. Share yeah. their past, deep, their past uh, nightmares or whatever uh, 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 that's on them, that's heavy on them. You know how many of them little chicks have been like, yeah, I've been touched on? Yeah. I'm like, what happened? Like, what happened yeah. to you? You know, what happened, what happened when you were young? Oh, I got raped. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, okay. Well, you know. And, and then you go, and that's when you go into it. Time. But they're like, oh, you are, you are homosexual. That's all. The most I hate you. Right. Like, what the hell? Like, you know you're going to hell, right? Right. You just come out of nowhere like you just going, <laughs> come on, man. We got to get more strategic and, and, and discern how to approach people. Go ahead. Finish it up so we can, so we can get up out of here. That I might by all means right? save some. Right. Verse 23. Come on. And this I do for the gospel's right. sake. He does it for his own sake. For the gospel's Wait, sake. Wait, I can't touch them because I'm going to be contaminated. For the gospel's sake. Come on. That I might be partaker thereof with you. And this is what we got to do things for. We got to look at and see that we represent the gospel. God. We represent the most high in Christ. And it's our mission. It's our job to not just deal with one. We can't be one track minded. Like, I'm not going to deal with that. Yeah. We got to get skilled and strategic, man. God. All right. Uh, any questions? <laughs> any questions? I know they probably got some questions online, but it's 10 on 4. They got questions on the topic? Yeah, there was one on the topic. What, what, what is it real quick? It said, when he destroyed Sodom and Lot was left with his daughters being passed out, his daughters took advantage of him, was that sin too? Like yeah, he wasn't supposed to sleep with his daughters. That's why it says Ammon and Moab can't enter into the congregation. So, yeah, they, that, that was off. They weren't supposed to get him drunk, and he was... He was supposed to have the wherewithal to understand that I'm sleeping with my daughters. He wasn't supposed to be that drunk to, to not understand what was going on. Like, mm -hmm. you weren't supposed to be drunker, a drunker. And that's just, that's just that filth that they learned out there, man. That was just more just that's Yeah, because look at where they were at. Where, where, where were they? They were in Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah. They were picking up on all that filthiness. They had little boys out in Sodom and Gomorrah, little girls. It was, it, it was, it was just like this filthy America. All right, it was the same thing. So yeah, yeah, they were all for doing that. They, it wasn't like Lot was blameless. That's why the kids got hit. Yeah, he they should, called them bastards. Yeah, I was gonna say he should, he should, he should have never made. Essentially, what just happened, if you yeah. look at like the situation of what just happened with the Most High, with with, with Christ destroying Sodom, mm -hmm. you can't let your daughters keep bringing you drinks. So to, to where you get to the point to where you're just out of it. Like you don't even know when they rose up or laid down. Come on. Yeah. You wasn't supposed to be that faded. It, let, it leads into that sin. That sin. That excessive wine, it, it causes folly, man. It, that's why it says uh, strong drink is raging and, and wine is a mocker. You know, it, it's going to cause you to do these things. Um, anything else on the topic? Yeah, uh, yeah, we thank everybody for joining us um, for another good class. The positivity on the line, we appreciate it. Um, let, don't forget Passover, April 21st. All right, it's a Sunday. If you want your garment, just let us know. The sisters are still getting that together. Um, if you'd like to donate for the Passover, do so to Google Wallet or the, or the Wells Fargo. Um, I mean, if that's it, we're going to salute everybody online and say shalom. Shalom! shalom. We'll see y'all back on Wednesday. That when we come with the truth, people think that the lies is the truth, and that the truth is the lie. Who changed the truth for God into a lie? In English, we